Price Stadium on the campus of Norfolk State University in Norfolk, Virginia for this MEAC matchup as the Norfolk State Spartans take on the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Hello again, everyone. Charlie Neal along with my partner, Eddie Robinson, and welcome to College Football Primetime. And when you look at this Norfolk State team, the first thing that comes to your mind, Eddie, is what a difference a year makes. Last year, they scored only eight touchdowns in their first four ball games. So far this year, they've scored 18 touchdowns, 11 of them coming on the ground. The reason, a three-headed monster. Yes, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are riding on the wheels of a Cadillac this year. However, Norfolk State has a sports car, a luxury car, and an SUV. If you look at Anthony, he's the speed guy who can make people miss. Johnson is a combination of speed and power, but my favorite, Jones, is a fullback who can also line up at tailback, dot the eye, and come down here with a powerful running game. But you can't just talk about those guys. You have to start with the big boys up front. They're playing with a lot more confidence and poise this year than they had last year, and that's really making a difference in their running game. And far as South Carolina State is concerned, their defense and their linebacker, Tony White, who was the MEAC Rookie of the Week, will have to come up big tonight. Well, yeah, this Rookie of the Week better pack a lunch because Norfolk State wants to run the ball at him all day long. And I think he's a guy who has to get the rest of his buddies also in the pitcher. It's going to be eight, nine-man fronts. He's going to need cornerbacks, safeties, Coach Buddy Pugh. Everybody's going to have to stop this running game. But White is more than up for the task, as you can see by his stats in the first couple of games. Eleventh meeting between Norfolk State and South Carolina State. We'll be back with the opening kickoff from Norfolk, Virginia on College Football Primetime in just a moment. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, comprised of 11 outstanding academic institutions, was established on the principles of educating and preparing student-athletes for the game of life. MEAC institutions have committed themselves to high academic standards, science and technology, scholarly research and community service. Our members represent the foundation for producing many of tomorrow's future leaders. On the playing field or in the classroom, the MEAC is continuing its proud tradition of academic and athletic excellence. Last season, millions of fans fell in love with the contender. Now, ESPN presents a rematch of their championship war. Oh, hey, this one. Sergio Mora defends his contender belt against Peter Manfredo Jr., plus an undercard featuring Alfonso Gomez, Jesse Brinkley, and Anthony Bonsante. Their stories touched our hearts. Now they fight for their boxing future. The contender rematch live Saturday, October 15th at 11 on ESPN. Welcome back to Norfolk, Virginia. Charlie Neal, Eddie Robinson here for College Football Prime Time. Norfolk State and South Carolina State preparing to do battle in this MEAC matchup. And let's look at the coach for the home team. And that's uh, Pete Adrian, actually. There's the other side of the field, and that's one of the assistant coaches over there for South Carolina State. But uh, Buddy Pugh is their head coach, and he's in his fourth year as the head man in Orangeburg. Pete Adrian is in his first year and the 16th head coach in Norfolk at Norfolk State. His first year, he came over from Bethune-Cookman College down in Daytona Beach, where he was the defensive coordinator for seven years, and he won a couple of MEAC uh, titles during that time. He's a graduate of West Virginia, and he has this team, as we said earlier, Eddie believing in themselves. Yes, they're playing with a lot of confidence, especially those guys on the offensive line. They're going to be the key today. They want to run the ball and then set up the play action. If they can be effective, it'll be a good night for Norfolk State. Should be a very interesting evening as far as Norfolk State is concerned. Their kick return team has done a pretty good job on the punt return, but as a kickoff return team, 16 yards per kickoff return, they rank 102nd out of 116 teams in Division I AA, and Stephen Grantham is going to kick it off, but it'll come down to Walker. Make this Anthony, Monty Anthony, and Anthony is across the 30, out to about the 33, 34 yard line. Monty Anthony on the return. They're trying to improve that rating. Real quick, try and get to the top 100. I would guess that was a good return to start off the uh, opening kickoff. And their quarterback, after the kickoff return of 33 yards, is Brandon Brooks. You see him. He's from Long Beach, California, went to Junior College, Compton Community College before transferring here to 
Norfolk State University. And they start with the eye formation. Monty Anthony will be the second back in the eye. Daryl Jones, the fullback, is the up back in the eye. And here is Monty Anthony. Breaks it to the outside across the 40. Fumbles the ball, but it's out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. And David Broom with the defender who came up to make the stop for South Carolina State. Number 16, but a first down is gained by the Spartans. And let's look at the line. Jason Crescent, Donovan Jackson, and Charles Lasso, the guards, the and the Emmanuel Snell. The back to receivers, running backs, we call Monty Anthony and Dow Jones, the receivers, Earl Henry, Emory Sammons, tight end is Jonathan Allen. It is first down and 10 for the Spartans. Brooks wants to go to the air. Rolls left, throws. Has a man wide out there. Open to that Sammons, and he has a first down. Right at about the 21-yard line of South Carolina State. South Carolina State actually won the toss and elected to defer. So you're thinking your defense is going to hold them back, right? Well, both teams uh, said that they would defer. But here you just see a short roll out. He gets his shoulder square, able to hit the corner route in stride. Good job and good throw and catch. I mean, they're making real big plays right now, and uh, they're in scoring position already. 34 yards on the catch by Sammons, his longest prior to that catch was 13 yards, and he has his team sitting in pretty good field position right now. First down and 10 at the 21 of South Carolina State. This team has scored a lot of points the last couple of weeks, and this time the second back through is Johnson, and he gets maybe a yard to the 20. Let's look at the defense of South Carolina State. They play three down linemen, well, four down linemen, actually, South Carolina State with Kinlock, Epps, Dickerson, and DeLorean Shaw down linemen. The linebackers, Tony White, a good one. Marshall McFadden, two-time Rookie of the Week in the MEAC, and Terrence Bennett. And the secondary led by Kevin Corley at the strong safety, along with Wesley Middleton, William Oliver, and David Broom. It is second and nine. Play action again under pressure, and he will not get it away. Big number 96 comes up, Joseph Dick Dixon, to make the stop for South Carolina State. That was just a textbook way of how you play the bootleg. Here they're trying to run a naked bootleg with big number 96, Joseph Dixon. He just stays at home. Good discipline play. And it's always hard to make a tackle in the open field on the quarterback. So whenever you can get that, job, get that job there and actually get him down and get the sack, always a great job. I know he feels good about that play. A loss of nine. Third and 18. That's the second sack for Dixon this year. Only the 10th time that Norfolk State's quarterbacks have been sacked this season. Quick drop. Here's the pass. And it's caught for a first down and more by Allen. Jonathan Allen, the tight end, takes it down inside the 10. First and goal before Wesley Middleton made the stop. You see, when Coach Adrian talked about Allen yesterday, he said if they don't double cover him, he'll have a big day. And you can see the ball is a little high, but he's using his athletic ability. He's a 6'5 guy, so he has a real big throwing target. Even though that ball is up there, he can go up and get it. 20 yards on the catch and run. That equals Allen's longest catch of the year. It is first and goal for Norfolk State at the nine-yard line. Monty Anthony is the second back, and he has the ball. Anthony slithers inside to about the five or six yard line tony white the first man to hit him number 44 before he got some help from his friends and this game is really starting exactly like coach adrian told us he said his philosophy was to run the ball set up the play action also have some play action with the tight end mix them up keep the defense off balance so far they have done everything that they have set out to do now they just have to try to punch this ball into the end zone as they get into the red zone here 78 percent for norfolk state in the red zone so far this year 13 of their touchdowns have come from the red zone Here's the run to the outside. Terrell Johnson reverses his field. Needs a block. Being chased down, and he's going to lose yards. And it was Terrence Bennett who came up the outside linebacker, a walk-on a year ago, who has 4-6-40 speed, and you see how it came into play that time. Yeah, good point there, Charlie. I mean, it's just too much team speed that South Carolina State has to reverse your field in this situation. You're better off just trying to get your two yards here. But Bennett just staying at home, and he can corral guys like that, that 4-6 speed. Coaches talk really highly of him, and he's always in the right position. So it brings up a third and long after that loss of 11 to Terrell Johnson. 
quick drop. The pass. Close to being intercepted, and they're saying it's completed, hit the ground. Wesley Middleton was laying odds on him picking that one off. Let's see how close it was. Brandon Brooks got away with one here. He just wanted to throw the ball away, but you don't want to throw it away in the middle of the field. As you can see, he clearly missed it. Did a good job of faking it. He made it look like a catch from up here. From the 17, it'll be a 34-yard field goal attempt by Antonio Gomez, who is five of nine in field goals this year. His longest is 34. This one has a little distance. And it is good. So Norfolk State gets on the board first. Three to nothing is their score in the long pass. It's set it up. Here it is. Hammonds all the way down the sideline. Emory Sammons with the long catch. And we'll be back. For her new room, we decided soft was in. Fall's the time for new carpet, because now at the Home Depot, purchase any of our stylish, colorful carpet, have it installed through us, and you'll get the carpet pad free. Plus, get no payments, no interest on everything in the entire store, from floors to refrigerators, with your Home Depot or Expo Consumer Credit Card. Looks like your fall to-do list just got a whole lot shorter. At the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. Attention football fans, can't get enough NFL this season? Follow your team and the entire NFL through the pages of Sports Illustrated. SI gives you the insight and analysis every fan wants with award-winning writing, spectacular photos, and coverage of all your favorite sports. Plus, as part of this special offer, you will also get a Team Choice NFL fleece jacket with the logo of your favorite team and this Team Choice NFL tee and the color of your favorite team. Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated illustrated for only a dollar 59 an issue a savings of over 60 percent off the cover price use your credit card for faster delivery and get a free nfl team hat call now and gear up in support of your favorite team with the officially licensed team choice nfl fleece jacket t-shirt and hat all free when you order a year of sports illustrated Call 1-800-221-1700. That's 1-800-221-1700. Or order online at sinflorder.com. Where he makes his mistake is, is that he doesn't protect the ball. It's pure fundamentals. Watch right here. He got sloppy. Here, right here. That's where he loses it. Let's look at that again. Hey, honey, did you... Always switch it to the other hand, away from where the pursuit is coming. What exactly are you doing? That's a mental breakdown. He got a little reckless there, and I'm sure he's going to catch an earful on the sidelines. Three to nothing is our score here. Norfolk State taking the opening drive. They go all the way down the field. They started at their own 33. It ended at the 17, but more importantly, they come away with some points on a 34-yard field goal by Antonio Gomez, who has been struggling at times this year, missed some crucial free throws, of free throw, field goals, I should say, in games in which they had a chance to win. Yeah, but he's 11 of 13 from inside the 40, so if you keep it within his range, he can be effective. He certainly will. Here's Darby from the 10-yard line. Very dangerous return man for South Carolina State. Stumbles up to the 35, 36-yard line. So, Rodriguez Darby, who was averaging 44 yards per kickoff return, they held him down pretty good that time. And that was a mistake that he... yards, 27. Right, and that was a mistake that he even touched the ball. They want to kick a real high sky kick, and I'm going to tell them, they're going to tell Gomez to kick that ball just a little bit higher and a little shorter because you don't want him to touch the ball and have a chance to beat you for a touchdown. And there's Cleveland McCoy, the quarterback of record. He's a sophomore redshirt from Hollywood, South Carolina, Baptist Hill High. He has his team all set. Deshaun Baker is the running back behind him. Here's a play action on first down, and he's letting it go. Darby's out there. It's overthrown. Rodriguez Darby, they went for the home run ball on first down. Let's look at the offensive lineup for South Carolina State, starting with the linemen up front. Raymond Harrison is the center. Jason Dean, along with James Lee, the guards, Clyde Reed and Nathaniel Richardson are the tackles. Reed is a preseason first-team all-conference selection. The backs and receivers, Darby, Capers, along with Baker, Burgess, King, and Smith. 
It is second down and ten. This time they keep it on the ground and as Baker running and gaining about seven or eight yards on the play. They'll make it seven. Let's look at the defense of the Spartans of Norfolk State. A 3-4 defense. This is what Pete Adrian likes to play with High, Williams, and Walker, the down linemen, four linebackers. McGuill Davis, watch out for him. He's a story. Devon Clanton, along with Phillip Brown and Fagan, and the secondary of Carey, Anderson, Alumba, and Twine. Here's the quarterback, Cleve McCoy, trying to get to the corner, and he is brought down immediately. Great play on the defensive side of the ball by Daniel Hammett. Hammett comes up to make the stop. He's the sophomore from Ocean Lakes High in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Turns 20 years old on Monday, and it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation. That was just a good job of him stretching that play out. Quarterback was rolling out, trying to get the first down. Corners coming up in support, making plays. That's what you want on the defensive side of the ball. Colby Brandyburg, a veteran punter, senior from Decatur, Georgia, will kick it away. Salmon's trying to field it, and he downs it at the 10. So the second possession coming up for the Spartans of Norfolk State. They lead it three to nothing. We're in the first quarter with 8.51 remaining. my credit, I never thought I'd qualify for a new computer. But with Blue Hippo, all I need is a home phone and a checking account, and approval is guaranteed. We're talking to people who've discovered Blue Hippo Funding's guaranteed approval program. It doesn't matter if you have bad credit or no credit, because we don't check your credit. Your approval is guaranteed with just an active checking account. I started my own home business, something I never could have done without a computer. And if you call in the next 10 minutes, we'll include a multifunction printer, scanner, copier with your order. A $250 value, absolutely free. And we'll also include a brand new digital camera, absolutely free. That's over $500 worth of computer accessories, all for free when you call in the next 10 minutes. I don't know why anyone wouldn't take advantage of this. It's a great offer. Mom, can I go on the computer now? Uh, just a minute. This is your chance to get a brand new, brand name computer from Blue Hippo, regardless of your credit. And by calling and ordering now, you'll receive this digital camera and this multifunction printer, scanner, copier for free. But you must call now. Here's to the beginning. A chance to carve out a new path. For this time, will be different. This is the year we leave our mark. This is the game we play together. This is our season. The colors change, the fires burn, and the possibilities are endless. The NCAA Championships on ESPN. ESPNU College Football Primetime, brought to you by NBA Live 2006. Their moves, your control, in stores now. Here in Norfolk, Virginia, College Football Primetime, 8.51, the time remaining. And Norfolk State with their second possession, they lead it 3 to nothing. First down and 10 at their own 10-yard line. Straight ahead is Terrell Johnson. And he has some running room and gets it all the way up across the 30 to the 34-yard line before Kevin Corley came up to make the stop defensively for South Carolina State, but a big run of 24 yards. You don't want your strong safety being forced to make tackles 24 yards down the field. Here they're just running the draw, a sprint draw. He brings the ball back to Terrell Johnson, and he just makes people miss and just goes downhill. And Corley is forced to make that tackle 24 yards downfield before he's even touched. That's the longest run for him this year. The previous was 23. 
First and ten, Terrell Johnson in the lineup. Play action now, rolling to the right as the quarterback. And he lets it go, and it's incomplete. Intending it for Errol Henry, the junior from Washington, D.C. And we have a penalty flag down, the first one of the ball game. Very impressed with this running game by Norfolk State. It is as advertised. You can see why they're ranked so high in the MEAC and the uh, NCAA 1AA standings with the rushing attack. You're yeah, ranked ninth in the nation. Here's Pete Adrian. A holding, holding penalty. Offense, number four, 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Remains first down. Monty Anthony trying to help his friends, and Daryl Davis is our referee. Let's look at some rushing statistics for the Spartans of Norfolk State. 258 yards per game. They lead the conference in that, in that department, and they're ranked ninth in the nation in all of Division I AA. After the holding penalty, it's still first down. Under pressure, the pass is thrown incomplete on the near sideline. Right in front of the Norfolk State bench and diving for it was Emory Sammons. But it was a little short. It would have been a first down had he been able to catch on to it. They have to get to the 44 to get a first down. The ball is all the way back at the 25. They came back to that same corner route to Emory Sammons. He had a big catch on the first drive that set up the first field goal, and they're just trying it to the other side of the field. Same play, just riverside it to the other side, see if you can't hit him again until they stop it. It is second down. We'll call it 20. Ball resting just inside the 25-yard line. This was intended to be a quarterback draw, and it was read very well by the defense of South Carolina State. They came up and quickly made the stop. DeLorean Shaw, he's a guy to be reckoned with. A preseason second-team all-conference selection out of Columbia, South Carolina, and Keenan High wearing number 92. He wasn't fooled at all by this. You can see South Carolina State, a lot of team speed and small quarterback. You have to really wrap him up, but they're doing a good job of getting him on the ground when they have a chance to sack him today. The loss of one, third and 21. Straight ahead, they go again and getting back a good chunk of the yardage that they had lost was the running back, Terrell Johnson. Middleton made the stop, and it'll bring up a fourth down and about eight in a punting situation, make it fourth and seven in a punting situation for the Spartans of Norfolk State. So we'll see their punter, Antonio Gomez, who was kind of forced into the punting duties last year after they fired the punter. He didn't want to abide by the rules, as the coach might say. He wanted to be a locker room lawyer, huh? And look at how he, he goes and, and goes after the ball. And he runs like a soccer-style kicker, like he's playing soccer, and runs and sprints to the right when he kicks it. And that is to prevent any good returns. Well, well. But the South Carolina State defense, one of the things we said, they would have to rise to the occasion. They did a very good job in that series. And they have the ball now with 6.44 to go in the first quarter when we come back. If it's played on a campus, it's on ESPNU. That's three on two. Score! He kept his feet going. Touchdown. He's got it. The best college sports action all year long. Oh, the Kerry and Davis rocking. The Denver Pioneers win the national championship. Score! Here's what's playing tomorrow night at 7 day U. At 7.30, the 2005 Old Spice Showcase Penn Showdown. ESPNU, always in season. 
Everyone wants a great looking haircut, but keeping your hair looking the way you want between haircuts is a problem. Now there's just a trim. It's a totally redesigned trimmer that's compact and cordless, and it has the cutting edge on the side. So now you can trim hair as easily as you comb hair and get professional looking results every time. Simply snap on a grooming guide to make it medium or trim it short. Plus, you get the professional edge you need for trimming sideburns, beards, and even the back of your neck. Barbershop perfect. No time for a haircut? Don't worry. With Just a Trim, you can stay looking sharp for a few more weeks. Call now and get Just a Trim, a $30 value for only $14.99. Plus, you'll receive our deluxe 10-piece grooming kit, a $20 value absolutely free. You get it all. An incredible $50 value, all for only $14.99. To order Just a Trim, call 1-800-960-6611. That's 1-800-960-6611. Six forty-four. the time remaining first quarter, second possession for the Spartans of Norfolk State. They have only six yards. They were three and out on their first series. Here's their quarterback running the offense for South Carolina State, and now he's going to take off. Cleve McCoy doesn't have a lot of running room. He's losing yards, and he's dropped all the way back at the six-yard line. They're going to probably mark it around the seven. Trying to run the quarterback draw, but they didn't fool anybody. That was Brandon Fagan, the outside linebacker, who stepped up here and chased him clear across field, and McCoy is heading in the wrong direction. You just have to get down. Save the play, but now it's a second and real long, and they're really backed up, so this is a tough situation for South Carolina State now. They lost nine yards on the play by the quarterback, Cleve McCoy. Last year, the quarterback for South Carolina State for most of the year was Brett Young. He's since departed, and now South Carolina State has gone with Cleveland McCoy, who's done a pretty good job for them this year. He's thrown five touchdown passes. Offense, number 71, at the distance, second down. Nate Richardson, the left tackle of preseason all-conference election, wearing number 71, was the, the man who was guilty of the false start. So that moves the ball back inside the five to about the four or three yard line. Let's see exactly where they have it. At the three. So it's second down and 19. They'll make it second and 24. Second down, 24. South Carolina State trying to keep the ball on the ground with Deshaun Baker, getting him a little bit of running room and breathing room out across the 10 to about the 12-yard line. They're just trying to get the ball into a, a manageable situation for third down, but you can see why Coach Buddy Pugh was so concerned about this defense. Of course, Pete Adrian coming over for Thune Cookman, he knows a whole lot about South Carolina State, and, and they felt like he has a real good game plan. He always game plans good against him. And it had but a few concerns early on. They had some big numbers a year ago when they played. These two teams played. 39-14 was the final score. South Carolina State won it down in Orangeburg. This is a third and 16 after a gain of eight on that last running play. From the shotgun, McCoy looking to go up top. Has it complete. And it should be enough for a first down as a flag. We may have a face mask on Don Carey. The ball is complete out to the 30-yard line, about the 29, and it's enough for the first down. But more importantly, we may add some more yards on the penalty. Our referee, let us know. Daryl Davis. Rumping the passer, number 96 of the defense. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. Well, they call roughing the passer on Willie Walker, number 96. Walker uh, out of Greensville College, of Greensville County High School. Real big play here on third down with their running is a post route and a deep in route. The safety comes up and makes, makes the hit, but it's too late because they already have the first down. Just a good execution by South Carolina State. So an 18-yard gain on a third and 16 gives South Carolina State a first down, add on the personal foul penalty, and that's moved the ball outside the 40 to about the 44-yard line, and Norfolk State's going to call a timeout and talk things over. 
Don't forget Saturday. ESPNU has a full day of college football. The day starts in the Big Ten at noon Eastern with Illinois taking on Indiana. Then at 3.30, the Duke Blue Devils battle the number nine Miami Hurricanes. It's an ACC matchup. That's college football on ESPNU Saturday at noon and 3.30. And for more information, just log on to ESPN.com. You know, the South Carolina State Bulldogs started the season, Eddie, with a, a win over Alabama State. That was in the SWAC MEAC Challenge. And they held Alabama State to just 24 yards rushing in that game. Then they beat Winston-Salem 52-12. A couple of uh, long kickoff returns. Darby had a 93-yarder, and South Carolina State put up 357 total yards. They beat Bethune by three, 27-24. They led in that game 20 to nothing, then found themselves trailing in that game 24-20 after three quarters. Darby had a 54-yard putt return, and then you see why they try to keep the ball away from him. And then last week, they lost to Coastal Carolina 24-23. They led 23-10 in that game. In fact, they led 23-10 after three quarters, but Coastal Carolina scored the winning touchdown with 70, uh, 17 seconds left. They drove 73 yards on that one. To, to win that game, 73-yard drive for Coastal Carolina. So they come in three and one, but they have the ball first and 10 right now. Cleve McCoy throws, it's incomplete on the far sideline. King, the intended receiver, a little bit too high for him. And that Coastal Carolina loss was just a real big blow to these guys because they started off bad, they were down 10-0, but they were able to come back and actually uh, had a chance to win that game at the end. It was a touchdown by Johnson, one of three for him. Then South Carolina State missed the extra point in that game. Then there was a late touchdown by Jerome Simpson that gave Coastal Carolina the win by one point. Right now, they're keeping the ball on the ground with Darby running the far sideline and finally drug out of bounds on the far side, but as a penalty flag back all the way back upfield. Don Carey finally making the stop on Rod Darby, who was a very, very elusive back receiver, whatever position you put him in, he can get it done. He's a great athlete. Coach Pugh told us that if he wasn't a football player, he'd make him be a gymnast, so you know <laughs> what type of guy he is. And you can see he's shifty and just slices straight through the Norfolk State defense, and they don't really have an answer for him as a punt returner or as a, a, a guy running the ball in a regular set offense. So a penalty nullifies the long run by Rod Darby. This is the second least penalized team in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, this South Carolina State team. Well coached and, and lots, shows lots of dis discipline, something that most coaches really want to emphasize with their teams. Averaging just about 65 yards in penalties per game. Again, they're keeping it on the ground. And finally, number 20, getting up at about the 41-42 yard line. Baker on the carry. There he is, Deshaun Baker. Eric Bullock on the stop defensively. Baker is a junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Last week he had 92 yards. He didn't play in the game the week before against Bethune-Cookman College. But he had 92 yards in that one-point loss. Now on third down and long. Operating from the shotgun, third and 12. They'll make it third and 11 for... South Carolina State. 35% on third down conversion, second in the conference in that department. Throws has it complete for a first down inside the 45 to about the 43 yard line. Don Carey had to, to make the stop after the completion to Kelly King. For King, his 19th reception of the year. Good execution here, you see quarterback is looking to the sideline McCoy to get the calls and all they're doing is just running the two shallow guys and then a deep dig at the top you want everybody to take the bait underneath it's kind of like going fishing everybody jumps on the big hook and then you catch them for that big first down on to the move the chains their quarterback McCoy two-time MEAC player of the week and he's back to throw it again on first down lets it fly Darby's out there can't get to it. That's the second time he's overthrown Darby. How do you overthrow a jet plane? <laughs> he's trying to show off his arm strength today, but, but sooner or later they're going to connect because Darby's been open twice, like you said, Charlie, here in the first quarter, and he's the speedster. He's the guy who makes the big plays for him, and Cleveland McCoy has to feel like he can get a touchdown out of this eventually. I mean, he's just running by everybody. 
just over the outstretched arms. He's running out of real estate, but the ball, he was he could have caught it because he was still in bounds, had enough room. Ball was just a little bit too far. And they give it to the fullback this time straight ahead. That's Capers. Now, this is an interesting situation here with Capers carrying the ball. In two years, this is the first time he has carried the ball in a football game. Yeah, you owe me a dollar because you bet me that he wouldn't get a carry today. So <laughs> <laughs> pay up after the game. <laughs> so to bring up a third and about five after the game by Capers. Those big fullbacks need a little love. They don't get a lot of chances to touch the ball. That's good that he gets a run today. From the shotgun on third and five, McCoy looking to the sideline. Buddy Pugh is also the offensive coordinator along with being the head coach. He says, I take the credit when we win. I, take, I, I, don't, have, I don't know who to blame when we lose. <laughs> so they call a timeout. South Carolina State spins one of theirs here in the first quarter. And uh, each team with two timeouts remaining in the half. Now let's look at South Carolina State and their football profile. They've been playing football down in Orangeburg since 1907. Overall record in that time, pretty good. 59% winning percentage. They've had some pretty good players that came out of South Carolina State over the years. I mean, Harry Carson, Charlie Brown, Deacon Jones, Marion Motley, Donnie Shell. They have a couple players who are playing now. Orlando Brown with the Ravens and Chartrick Darby with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, you know, they, they can they can put them out. They, they do a great job of putting guys into the NFL, of course. You have a couple of uh, Hall of Famers on that list with Deacon Jones and Marion Motley. And one of my favorite players growing up as a kid, oh, Harry Carson, guy that's not in the Hall of Fame. He should be. He very well should be. He played 13 years made the Pro Bowl eight years was on the 86 Super Bowl team with the Giants and he's the guy that started the whole Gatorade bath dumping the water on Bill Parsons <laughs> but he's a great player and, and the talk has been going back and forth that should he or shouldn't he be and hey he got my vote Harry he's a great player and the guy I always looked up to as a young linebacker all right third down and five right now from the I formation McCoy working under center and the handoff back to the near side and bouncing in and getting the first down is Baker. So on third down and five, he needed five. He looks like he got six. Just enough. First and ten. They move the chains. You can see the variety in South Carolina State offense. They come out with five wides. Now they come out in the I formation with a downhill running game. So you really have to prepare for these guys. It's tough when you have a team that can go with five wide receivers. The next thing you know, they're running at you with a guy like Darby coming downhill who is a good runner. Burgess is in a slot to the left side. Darby's flanked out wide to the left. Here's McCoy with room on the right side. Has some open field over there and goes out of bounds near the first down marker right at about the 23-yard line run out by Anthony Olumba. And we Everybody talk, went left and he went right. Yeah, smart <laughs> guy. You don't want to get hit. And we talked to Coach Pugh about Cleveland McCoy and he said he's an efficient passer good runner and he's also tough so he has all of the qualities and as you can see he just makes real smart decisions he can beat you with his arm as well as his legs so you have to stay in your rush lanes else he can get out of the pocket and be effective and it's still refining his ability here's Deshaun Baker cutting to the right then back to the left and he has the first down that was a second and one play Philip Brown on the defense for Norfolk State coming up to make the stop number 50 the linebacker even though McCoy is a young guy, Coach Pugh said he felt like he could be the best quarterback out of all of the quarterbacks he's had at South Carolina State by the time he's a senior. So that tells you what kind of faith he has in him and how he's really progressing from year to year. It's only his first year as a full-time starter. Second time, two times, I should say, as he gives the ball off this time to Jonathan Woods, first carry for Woods tonight. But McCoy, as Sam Lawson made the stop, McCoy was the two-time MEAC Offensive Player of the Week. He was the Offensive Player of the Week against Alabama State in the MEAC SWAC Challenge and then against Bethune Cookman, he was also the MEAC Player of the Week. Last year against Norfolk State, he only threw the ball nine times. And he was intercepted twice, sacked twice, but ran for a pair of touchdowns on 96 yards. I think he's already thrown more than nine times in the first quarter, so <laughs> Coach has a lot more trust in him than he did last year when he was the first-time starter. Actually, he's thrown five times so far. He's two of five, and here's a little 
inside counter play down to the 10 yard line and they've moved this ball pretty steadily they started this drive at their own 17 yard line this is the 13th play of the drive so they've moved the ball pretty good and ate up a lot of time off the clock they got the ball with 644 to go it's down to 132 so they've already used over five minutes off the clock let's look at the play selection last season against Norfolk State against this one what they were able to do but they mixed it up pretty good with running and passing yeah, they're, they're still doing a good job of doing some first down play action but tonight 12 rushes five passes so they're still going to be a predominantly running team but as you can see they've taken some shots going deep and uh, they've overthrown both of them but I'm sure it's something that they're going to keep in the game plan because both times they were behind the safeties for Norfolk State now they're going to measure I believe for the first down Now let's look at how they come down the field. 74 yards, and started throwing 17, and here's a pass over the middle. Another pass out to the right flat. And then here's Deshaun Baker with his legs. And of course, we had the quarterback himself, McCoy, pick up some valuable yards running to the right. Some crucial third down conversions. Whenever you get those guys in third and long, you definitely want to get off the field. Coach Pete Adrian's just sitting back in the zone. I don't know if some some point in the game he may start bringing pressure on third down, try to get Cleveland McCoy a little unrattled. Third down and one now. This will be the sixth third down attempt for South Carolina State tonight. They are three of five so far in third down conversions. Full house backfield. And a good run off the right side by Woods, and Woods is down to the one. Woods takes it to the one-yard line. As you can see, South Carolina State has their own power running game also. Woods just following behind the two blockers, slicing off tackle, getting vertical north and south, heading towards the goal post. Full house backfield again. Will it be Woods? And it is Woods. And Woods is hit by number six immediately on the defensive side. And that is Dante Anderson. Anderson is a strong safety who came up to make the stop for the running back. No gain on the play. It'll be second and goal. Same play, different result. They went back to Woods and just tried to punch it in, running the same formation, but it didn't work this time as Norfolk State was prepared. Lorenzo High, the nose guard, is a little shaken up, and he's down on the field right now at about the two or three yard line. He's a junior out of Tarwood High in Virginia Beach, Virginia. You talk about Norfolk State, they started the season with a loss to Virginia State, a Division II school, 34 to six. They had a punt block, uh, that was returned for a touchdown. Brooks was 9 of 28, 91 yards through three interceptions in that game. And then they lost to A&T, only lost by two points. A&T scored on a fumble recovery, allowed 252 yards running by A&T. Quante Spate, their good running back, picked up some valuable yards in that game, 152 yards for the Aggies. They lost to Bethune in four overtime, 63-61. Gomez missed a field goal of 33 yards at the end of regulation. He had a 36-yarder blocked in the overtime, and they lost by two. And last week, they beat Savannah State. Only their third win in their last 25 games, and they won that one 58-29. Right now, second and goal. Going to pass is McCoy. Rolls out, throws, incomplete. Good play call on second down. You try to pound it in there twice, twice, and then you come out with Cleveland McCoy, who's always a run threat, play action and get him on the edge and try to sneak in a pass for the touchdown. So it's third down again, third and goal. And little McCoy looks like he may be hobbling just a bit. Third down conversion, uh, should say red zone conversion, 71%. And there's, there's a flag down. It is a touchdown, I believe, for South Carolina State, for Deshaun Baker. And it should hold up. Third, that'll be his third touchdown of the year. But we have, may have an excessive celebration flag. You don't want to play is a touchdown after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. 
number 21 of the scoring team. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So Deshaun Baker with the touchdown run gives South Carolina State the lead. They lead it 6-3, to three, and they're waiting the point after by Stephen Grantham. He's missed two extra points this year. He's 15 of 17, trying to make it number 16 of the year and make it a 7-3 game. The kick is up. It splits the uprights, and it is good, and that's the way we stand with 38 seconds left here in the first quarter. And let's look at Baker and see what caused him to get the penalty flag. It doesn't take much these days to get a penalty for excessive celebration. You can see no one touches him. Same play going to the other side of the field. And I think the, the crossbones right there, the, the skull and crossbones probably gave him the penalty, which is a big penalty because on this kickoff, they'll be really backed up. Coach says, hey, we don't need that. They had to hold the coach back. <laughs> He's right. I mean, Deshaun Baker is a great player. He's a junior. He's a team leader, a guy that's been around the program for a while. He can't make those type of mistakes and was going to be a close ball game for South Carolina State tonight. What was very impressive about that drive by the Bulldogs, they used up six minutes of the clock. They took the ball from their own 17. They drive 83 yards, and they used 18 plays. Right, and that's going to really tire down the Norfolk State's defense. I mean, they told me that they're going to play 10 or 11 defensive linemen and a lot of linebackers also. But when you're out there stopping 18 plays and they're converting those third downs, that really hurts the whole morale of the defense. Here's the kick by Grantham. Monty Anthony dumped at the 32. Monty Anthony was really dumped at the 32-yard line, and that should be the end of the first quarter. It was Glover who came up for South Carolina State on the special team to knock Mr. Anthony down. So that's going to be the end of the first quarter here on College Football Primetime. It's a MEAC matchup between South Carolina State and Norfolk State with the Bulldogs leading it right now 7-3. To play professional volleyball, you better be in great shape. To play at age 41, you better be in the best shape of your life. How do I do it? Bowflex. Introducing the all-new Bowflex Extreme 2. Now you can get great results faster than ever. I've been an athlete all my life and nothing works better than Bowflex. I've been on this machine for six weeks and packed 12 pounds of muscle onto my frame. Call right now for your free DVD that tells you all about Bowflex. I put the Extreme 2 to the test. I got pumped arms, ripped abs, and legs of steel. Let's face the facts, we all get older, but we sure don't have to look it. I'll admit it, I want to look good and perform well at the beach. But if I'm out slamming it with 20-somethings, I need the kind of shape that only comes through strength training with Bowflex. Change your body in one easy 20-minute workout done just three times a week. The new Bowflex Extreme 2 features a no-cable-change pulley system, delivering faster workouts than ever because you don't have to change cables between exercises. That cuts down on my workout time, which allows me to do more of the things that I want to do. If you're serious about losing weight, getting fit, and getting an awesome shape, then check out the new Extreme 2. To be back playing pro volleyball after leaving the tour over 10 years ago is amazing. If you want real results real fast, you need a real Bowflex. Believe me, there are great advantages to having a Bowflex body. 
Call right now for this free DVD or order directly from Bowflex for only $25 a month. Call today or visit them online. I'm 41 years old and I'm in the best shape of my life. After an impressive 18 play drive by the Bulldogs, Norfolk State gets the ball for the third time as we start the second quarter. First down and 10 at their own 33 and they go to Terrell Johnson who gets back to the line of scrimmage and that's about it. Maybe a yard. Let's go to the studio and catch up on what's happening. Mike, take it away. Well, Charlie, in Atlanta, Georgia Tech had the chance to draw first blood. Travis Bell pushed it to the right side and is NC State jumps on that and capitalizes right away. Yeah, great play by NC State. Brian Clark with the touchdown. Safety's first responsibility is pass first, run second. Dewan Landry must stay back. Seven zip, Charlie, back to you. All right. North Carolina State trying to upset some people up there, huh? Down in your hometown. That's a good game. <laughs> it is second down and nine. Long pass. Almost intercepted, intended for Derek Baker, and coming up with it was William Oliver, or I should say knocking it away. William Oliver played it as well as you could play it. A good job by William Oliver right here staying back. He's actually the cornerback, so the safety is beat on that play. And he's just coming across, gets two hands on the ball, but just can't pull it in. If he's not there, Charlie, that's a touchdown all the way by Norfolk. That's right, and uh, Derek Baker, he's a speedster. 400 meter relay team. He can get out and behind people just like Darby can for South Carolina State. Right, he was the guy who transferred from Florida State, an All-American sprinter, who's now the wide receiver here at Norfolk State. Now Norfolk State's going to call a timeout, come over and talk things over. You know, Pete Adrian, we talked about the fact that he came into this program after being at Bethune-Cookman College, he brought a couple coaches with him from Bethune-Cookman College. But for some of these players, and Terrell Johnson being one of them at running back spot, this is the fourth or third coaching staff he's seen in the four years that he's been here. Yeah, and that's tough when you have different coaches coming in. You can also throw in Rick Comages, who took the job and then gave it back right before Willie Gillis came. So you have all of those different guys. And what he said also is that he's two recruiting classes behind because those coaches came in late, didn't have a chance to get the full recruiting season going. So he's real anxious to get in here, get his players in here, get some recruiting going. And in this area, the whole Tidewater, Virginia area, Hampton, you have some great players here so he can recruit at home and really put some a good product on the field for Norfolk State. You're talking about recruiting at home. I was uh, reading about the or talking about the Tidewater area players. You had guys like uh, uh, Lawrence Taylor, Allen Iverson, Bruce Smith. All of those guys came from the Tidewater area. Plaxico Barris, uh, of course, Michael Vick and Marcus Vick, you know, they, it's 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 loaded with talent down here. He doesn't have to fuel the carp and go very far to get <laughs> no, some good players. <laughs> Third down and eight. And here's a delayed draw. Here's Terrell Johnson. Johnson at midfield. Great call. Breaks it off to the right on a draw play. He's still on his feet. And run out of bounds right inside the 15 at about the 11-yard line. Finally, Kevin Corley ran him out of bounds. But look at a run by Terrell Johnson. His longest prior to this was 24 yards. This one was a big one. This is a good call. It's a third and eight situation, the sprint draw. Quarterback brings the ball back. You see he fakes like it's going to be a rollout and just hits him right up the middle. Good block up front by big number 77, Jason Crescent. Once he gets past the middle linebacker, it's just a foot race. Great play by Norfolk State. Great call by the coaches also. And you know what is so amazing? Anytime you see a long run like that, the first thing you look for, where's the flag? Where's the flag? And there's no flags on the play. 55 yards. He had a 24-yarder on the first drive. 55-yarder there, and they're down, knocking on the door. This time it's Monty Anthony. And he breaks it down to about the 8-yard line. 7, they'll mark it. Monty Anthony on the carry. A gain of 3. And we talked in the open about the three running backs that Norfolk State has. And you see all of the different guys coming in. Now you have Daryl Jones coming into the game, who's the big physical bruiser. And they just kind of interchange these guys out. Anthony, Johnson, and Jones, all of them are effective. And that can really wear down the South Carolina State defense today. They've got the big fullback, Travion Smith, in there, too. So they got two fullbacks in the backfield behind the quarterback. Brandon Brooks, and they give it out 
to the fullback Jones, Daryl Jones. He doesn't get much. Maybe lost the yard. But I like Daryl Jones, and I like that concept of having a big guy that's a fullback. You're moving the tailback kind of like Mike Allstott does, and then you have a big power backfield. And when you're in the goal line situation, you have some big guys. You also have Trayon Smith, who's just a pure blocker. He doesn't touch the ball, but he's a guy that can go downhill and create holes for all of these different backs that we have tonight. Trayon Smith was in the lineup. He was the up back blocking for Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones has been bothered with the turf toe, but he's, he didn't practice yesterday, and that actually hasn't practiced all week, but uh, he said he'd be ready to go tonight. It's third down. Quarterback under a little pressure. He will not get this one off. Boy, they were coming with everything. They brought it all. There wasn't anybody left. Matthew Brickman led the charge, number 91. At South Carolina State. Those guys have a lot of team speed. You can see my man Brandon Brooks here just doesn't have a chance. He's trying to complete a rollout, get his shoulder square, and it's just, the, the pressure is just coming up front too quick. They almost caught him by the ankles as he first stepped away from the line of scrimmage. South Carolina State Bulldogs getting to him and have a real mean attitude when they do. Field goal attempt of 36 yards this time by Gomez. He hit a 34 yarder earlier. High snap gets it up. He has the distance. And it is good. So Gomez has kicked a pair of field goals tonight from 34 and 36 yards out. And his team is within one with 11.49. That's the time remaining here. We're in the second quarter of this MIAC matchup on college football prime time. Fact. Scientists now know there are three major causes of male hair loss. Fact. The newly patented Follicare Hair Growth and Restoration System is the first product that fights all three of these hair killers at the same time. Fact. In testing by an independent lab, 100% of men using Follicare grew new hair in just eight weeks. That's right, 100% of men grew new hair, and you will too. We guarantee it. I was going bald. Then I started to use Follicare, and there's a lot more hair there in a very short period of time. It's a great product. Follicare's patented formula works for thinning hair or on an annoying bald spot. Here's why we lose our hair as we age. First, blood flow decreases, and not enough oxygen and key nutrients reach our follicles. Second, the chemical DHT builds up in hair follicles and causes them to shrink. And third, we don't get enough of the nutrients needed to grow healthy hair. Follicare fights all of these hair killers with over 50 key ingredients that together help you grow and keep your own hair. Single approach products can't give you the incredible results that Follicare can. Follicare was developed by Dr. Chris Catalpo, who at 28 years old was rapidly going bald. Desperate, Dr. Catalpo attacked all the reasons for his hair loss at once and now has a full head of hair. His research gave us Follicare. It takes less than five minutes a day to use and costs less than a cup of coffee. And unlike some other products, there are no unwanted sexual side effects. Unless you actually put this on your head, there's no way in the world that you're going to understand how good it is. Have you ever heard a guy say, gee, I wish I were bald? No. Don't wait to get to this point to do something about hair loss. You too will grow hair with the patented Follicare system. We guarantee it or your money back. You can find hair loss and Follicare guarantees it. Unlike other products, Follicare costs as little as $1 a day. Call 1-800-284-5494 to order now. Follicare is easy, it's patented, and it works. Don't wait. Call 1-800-284-5494 or visit Follicare.com and get started today. Seven to six is our score. A pair of field goals. As we look at that last scoring drive, seven plays, 48 yards, but he's here in the Tideboard area where it's a second down and two facing the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. They lead it by one point. They'll work out of the shotgun this time with Cleve McCoy on a play action. He'll keep it, lets it fly. Wide open, Darby. Can't get it. Safety came over just in time to knock it away, and that is Don Carey. I'll tell you, because Darby again was behind everybody. Yeah, Don Carey got lucky on this play because what he did was he bit up on the dig route. They threw a couple of dig routes, which is the deep end, and this time they came with the post behind the deep end, and he got caught sniffing at that deep end route, and they snuck the post behind him, but he had good recovery speed, was able to make a play on the ball and just make an incompletion and not a, not a catch for a big first down. And Darby had the ball in his hands, but again, with the defensive back, Carey coming over, he was able to knock it away. It is third and two now for South Carolina State. 
the quarterback is going to keep it on the option and he gets the first down with Benny to spare down the sideline he goes and finally brought down on the far side by Alumba Alumba chased him down but not before big yardage picked up by the quarterback Cleveland McCoy whose longest previous run was 35 yards and you can see the speed by Cleveland McCoy here is just called a speed option he's just trying to get to the corner fast he doesn't even consider pitching that ball he just <laughs> outruns the secondary and is up the sideline like a track star that was good for 48 and a first down all the way down to the 20 of Norfolk State from the I formation Woods the second back and he takes it down to the 15 yard line a gain of five before Brandon Fagan who's quite a story in itself who got caught up with the wrong crowd in the Norfolk Virginia area he's out of Booker T Washington High dropped out of high school in his senior year was homeless for a while his mother put him out then he finally got together with his aunt and some administrators they got him back in school and he got his diploma from Lake Taylor High and he's played three positions here for Norfolk State meanwhile again here's the running back Woods getting the first down and Woods is all the way down to the six yard line that's just a great story by Fagan I mean it's just a situation where you don't give up where his family didn't quit on the kid he was able to turn it around now he's here on campus college environment playing football doing what he should be doing and it's just a great credit to him that he had some early troubles but did turn it around certainly did so it is first and goal for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State and now a timeout is being whistled Let's see who's gonna call this one Norfolk State I believe each team now has only one timeout left in the half timeout on the field right now we're at college football prime time. South Carolina State ranked 24th in 1AA. Here in Norfolk, 10.02 remaining. And there's Buddy Pugh. This is what he's done since he's been here. 7-5 and five when he took over the program in 2002. 8-4 and four in 2003. 9-2 a year ago. Co-champs of the conference. And very disappointed the team didn't get a 1AA playoff bridge. It is first and goal, though, for his team right now. They lead it by one, seven to six. The handoff is to the second back, Woods, out of Morris Cove, Texas. And Miguel Davis made the stop defensively, leading tackler in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, number 41. Yes, and last year, South Carolina State only had two losses to Hampton and also to Wolford, who both made the 1AA playoffs. So they felt like they should have gotten into those playoffs, and they would have. They were playing really good down the stretch. Just on the outside looking in, they were the co-champs, but because Hampton beat them in a head-to-head -head competition, they weren't able to make it into the playoffs in 2004. Now another timeout's being called. Let's see who called this one. I'm not sure if it was Norfolk State. South Carolina State. So I think they've used all three of their timeouts, the Bulldogs, and it's still nine minutes to go in the first half. ESPN Game Plan features 15 plus college football games each week. So if you can't find the big game you want this Saturday, well, there's a good chance it's on ESPN Game Plan. Don't miss the games you really want to see. Now, the marquee games this week Minnesota versus number 21, Michigan, Oklahoma against second ranked Texas, and Virginia takes on 18th ranked Boston College. It's ESPN Game Plan, available on TV and online. And to order, call your pay per view provider or go to ESPN. Dot com keyword game plan Charlie Neal and Eddie Robinson with you here in Norfolk for this MIAC matchup and a second and goal facing the Spartans defensively of Norfolk State while South Carolina State has the ball and they're trying to take it in McCoy the quarterback seventh play of the drive again the handoff is to Woods, and he stopped shy of the goal line. He was spun around at about the three. I really like McCoy. You see, he's just a, a real cool guy under center as he looks around and sees which way he wants to run. He audibles to the run off the left side. But good play by Norfolk State getting pressure inside so that play can't get started as Don Carey coming off with a safety blitz. Running back never had a chance to get his feet up under him. 
Deshaun Baker, Woods, and Capers are the backs in the full house backfield. And it's Baker going to the left side. Baker gets in. Touchdown, South Carolina State. His second touchdown of the night. That's the same play they used to score off of the other touchdown, just going to the other side of the field. They get into that T formation, three guys across. The first two guys block, and the third guy gets the hand off. I'm sure they have a play action off of that, but until you stop the run, there's no need to go to that play action. Drive started at their own 24. Another impressive drive by the Bulldogs. Eight plays, seven, 76 yards, and they used over three minutes off the clock. And here's Grantham for the point after to make it a 14 to six ball game. Flag is down. We may have offsides on the defense. Let's see what happens. Two flags are down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was offside because he got, got back there pretty quick. He almost blocked the kick. So out of three possessions for the Bulldogs tonight, they there scored two twice. on the play, offsides on the defense, and running into the kicker on the defense. So there were two penalties. The referee threw one, the line judge threw the other. Fouls are declined. Result of the play is an extra point. The extra point, and so they'll kick it off with 8.36 remaining here in the first half, and South Carolina State has increased their lead by eight. Deshaun Baker with his second touchdown of the day. He makes it look easy, and we'll be back. Pete Adrian talking to his defense there. And one of the things Buddy Pugh told us was he felt that Pete Adrian had a good feel for South Carolina State because of his prior experience as a defensive coordinator at Bethune Cookman. Short kick and a fair catch called for by the up man at the 32 yard line. Here's a young man who probably is not used to, to catching the ball for uh, Norfolk State. As we look at the touchdown once again, that was just the Dustin Johnson who came up with it. But let's look at the touchdown by Baker. It's just the same play they ran before. You have the two guys in the T formation blocking with the lead blocks, and Baker just takes a hand off and follows off tackle. But this time he did not get the penalty. I'm sure he ran back to the sideline. <laughs> no skull and crossbone signs because Buddy Pugh got on him pretty bad for that last penalty after the touchdown. Only two touchdowns for Baker before this game, and he has two already in this contest. The bruiser, they give it to the big fullback, and he is hit right away by Tony White. We talked about Tony White earlier, and he would have to have a big game. The strong side linebacker, he's a redshirt freshman out of Seneca, South Carolina. Had seven solo tackles against Winston-Salem, 12 total, and he was the MEAC Rookie of the Week against... Coastal Carolina last week, he had 11 solo tackles. Yeah, he's a tough kid, but he went up against their big guy, and he stood him up and took him down. And said so he goes to practice with Band-Aids in his pockets because he delivers a lot of big hits. <laughs> <laughs> it is second down after a gain of four, second down and six. Brandon Brooks under pressure. Will not get far. One of those big linemen was able to chase him down. Big number 99. I believe it was. Keon Brooks was the man who made the stop out of Miami's Killian High. Yeah, Brandon Brooks never really has a lot of time to get comfortable in the pocket. Whenever he tries to drop back and pass, the big guys, Brooks and number 99, and the rest of the South Carolina State defense covers him pretty quick. So he has to do the next best thing, which is to run and get some positive yards. Six third down facing Norfolk State tonight. They are two of five in that department on third and two. And again, it's going to be very close as the fullback gets the carry. And that is Daryl Jones out of Fork Union High, or Fork Union Academy in Hermitage High here in Richmond, or in Richmond, Virginia. So they're going to are they saying it is a first down? He did get the first down. He got to the 42. Yeah, yards after contact. Don't forget, Daryl Jones is the big fullback, but he'll dot the eye and get that tailback like he's doing right now. And it's like a Mike Alstott type of back who can still power from the tailback position. And he put Treyon Smith as the up back in front of him. And there he goes. As you said, the big guy, he takes, he carries a load, and it takes a lot of people to bring him down. First hit by Wesley Middleton at the bottom of the pile. You know, one of the things they want to do on offense, Nor Norfolk State does with Pete Adrian, they really want to control the clock. I mean, they know that 
South Carolina State has an explosive offense in his own right. So the best thing you can do is to make those guys sit on the sideline. Keep McCoy and all of those guys watching. And you control the clock with your own offense. Be real methodical. Convert third downs and have a strong running game and move the clock and the chains. Eight players from this South Carolina State team made the all-conference squad. Three of them won the first team all on the offensive side of the ball. So they, they have some talent there. This time, here's Norfolk State's Terrell Johnson. Johnson breaks it to the outside, and he's going to be cutting back inside, and he's inside the five to the four-yard line. Terrell Johnson with another big run before Terrence Bennett made the stop. And you can see why Norfolk State is number one in the MEAC and rushing the ball. It's because of this type of offense. They come with the big guy, Darrell Jones, and all of a sudden you see the quick power guy, Terrell Johnson. He's able to get the power run going to the strong side, cuts back to the left, up the sideline, still making people miss. Here's a guy who's a senior, been around here through three coaches, so he's been through the struggles, and now he's having some success at Norfolk State. He's over 100 yards. That run good for 55, uh, 50. He had a 55-yarder the last time they had the ball. Monty Anthony has it right now, and Monty is stood up at about the two. And Charlie, I can't stress to you how hard it is from a defensive perspective when you have different guys who are running the ball effectively like Norfolk State is today. I mean, first you have to face big Darrell Jones, who's a fullback lining up at tailback with Trayon Smith blocking for him. I mean, that's a lot of weight in the backfield. That's almost 500 pounds of guys <laughs> running in the backfield. Then they come out with a little speedster like Terrell Johnson and now Monty Anthony. It's hard to prepare for all of those different backs. And Monty Anthony goes to the sideline. Terrell Johnson has the ball, tries to cut it back inside, and is brought down at the one-yard line. Nothing yet from our officials, just shy of the goal line. It'll bring up a third down. And South Carolina State's coming out with the T formation, and now Norfolk State with the old power eye formation where you have three guys lined up in the backfield with offset fullback. So it's no secret that both of these teams, when they get to the goal line, they want to power it in. Remember the last couple of times Norfolk State was down here, they tried to pass or sack. I think this time they're just going to use the power running game and try to get into the end zone. Well, Terrell Johnson comes out. They bring in Emory Sammons, the wide receiver. And they got the big fullbacks in there, Jones and Treyon Smith. Jones goes in motion. They give it to the big guy, and he goes over. <laughs> Treyon Smith. He doesn't touch it that often. The walk-on. But he takes it in for him that time. And you got to like that. Coach Adrian said he's the unsung hero. When you have three guys who are all doing a great job of rushing the ball. Offensive line is doing a great job. Trayon Smith, he's the guy that just looks up linebackers and makes his block week after week. Not expecting a lot of glory, not expecting to touch the ball. But here they give him a bone, and he's able to get into the end zone. And actually has two touches today, two carries, one for a touchdown. Highly effective. And I'm sure South Carolina State does not have him on their game plan as far as guys who will run the ball tonight. And they're going for the two-point conversion, but they're going to get a delay of game if they don't hurry up. Here's a fade into the corner. And it's Whoa, what a catch. What a catch in the corner on the fade route. And coming up with it is Jonathan Allen, the junior from Virginia Beach, and we're all tied at 14. Great job by Norfolk State on this drive. Just power running, going down the field. Being real effective, and they got to the goal line this time. They just used the big guys to get in there. No cute stuff, no passes. The big fullback, number 39, Trayon Smith. Not a lot of carries. Unsung hero, a walk-on. Brandon Brooks enjoying that touchdown. And the two-point conversion goes to Jonathan Allen, who Coach Adrian really talked highly of. He's actually the tight end, but he said if they do not double cover our tight end, he's a guy that will be highly effective, and he's drawn double coverage earlier in the year. So they said if he's singled up, we will throw him the ball. You can see the excitement from Norfolk State on the sideline. The man who he beat over there was David Broom, and it's starting to rain here. In Norfolk, they said it was about a 50% chance of rain at uh, before game time that we may get a little shower. I would love being the weatherman, Charlie. 50% chance of rain <laughs> means a 50% chance of sunshine. Just say, I don't know. <laughs> what a job. <laughs> but 
Terrell Johnson, 135 yards on seven carries tonight. And here's the Norfolk State kicking off, and Darby takes it out to about the 31-32 yard line, and that's where South Carolina State will start with their fourth possession at their own 32 yard line. What is so ironic is out of all the possessions today, each team has only punted one time. They've scored one way either on touchdown or field goals, and we're all tied at 14. And we're in the second quarter with 4.03 to go, and South Carolina State has put up some impressive drives today, so I'm sure they'd like to take the ball and hold the, run the clock down and score just before halftime. Yeah, and of course, with the rain coming into play now, I mean, you have two power running teams, but Norfolk State is, is more built to this type of weather. I mean, this is what they want to do. They want to run the ball. You don't want to try to pass with the rain and those type of uh, inclement conditions. So look for Norfolk State to really ground up, uh, to crank up their running game even more going into the uh, rest of the game. Well, you mean South Carolina State also. Right, both of, both them. of them. Yeah. And here's the handoff to Deshaun Baker. Baker breaks the tackle and still... Well, you talk about run after contact. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's doing a good job. That's Don't forget, coming up at halftime, our halftime report from the U, Mike Gleason, Steve Israel, Tom Luganbill. And we'll have the story on the Wolf Pack against the Yellow Jackets. Some weekend winners. And we'll have the Spartan Legion marching band. All of that coming up here at halftime on the U. You want to stay with us? Again, Deshaun Baker off the left side has the first down and breaking tackles and close to midfield shy by a yard of getting to the midfield strike. McWell Davis on the stop defensively. He's quite a story himself out of Newport News, Virginia, leading tackler in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Started his college career at the University of Delaware. Playing linebacker there and decided to change schools. Uh, they say that he may be and have more physical talent than Tally. Tally was the, the man who led the nation in tackles a year ago from North Last year, to, to, to say that McGuell talent speaks by the linebacker. Offense, number 86, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Uh, let's hope uh, there's a little thunder we hear. Uh, there's a holding penalty. At least hopefully the thunder doesn't upset things here. It's raining pretty hard. But, uh, picking up on Miguel Davis, he actually has a twin brother. Yeah. You mentioned of his brother, and this is his first time. You know, they both went to naturally Little League, high school, and college together at Delaware. So this is his first time playing linebacker without his brother next to him. So I said, who do you trust on the football for <laughs> who to look to? He said all of his teammates are there for him, and he know that they all have his back and that they all just do a good job of getting around the football. Marquez, Marquez is his brother. He has an older brother who's on the IR list for the New York Jets. Talented Mondo, family. yeah. And he's run out of bounds in front of the South Carolina State bench, but he has another first down. And this has been the problem with Norfolk State. I mean, we always talked about their big ground game, the way they're putting up points on offense, but they haven't been able to stop anybody. They haven't really improved a whole lot defensively. Coach, Coach Adrian said they're playing hard. He's doing what they're doing with their acts week to week. But now it's time to make that transform into actually taking points off the board and being an effective defense. I understand we were off for a little while there. This uh, hard rain here is not helping the situation. And we apologize for our technical difficulties, but we welcome you back to Norfolk where it is really coming down. Normally rain like this doesn't last too long. <laughs> Hopefully it'll stop sweeping the way it is. This time it is Jonathan Woods on the carry. Coming to the right side. That was a first down play. The clock continuing to run down. Sharon Williams on the stop defensively. South Carolina State next will be at home against the Rattlers of Florida A&M. And then they go to Hampton University. And if they can prevail here that uh, and next week against Florida A&M, that would be a big game in Hampton. That would be Hampton's homecoming. We have a flag down, and we got Woods trying to get to the outside, and he swarmed under, under by a, a host of green jerseys. I mean, that's a good play by Norfolk State. Unfortunately, it looks like the offside will be on Norfolk, and it is. 
after making good play and look at Pete Adrian he's he's upset with the defense down there. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. There it is. Neutral zone infraction. And once you get all that weight leaning forward, those big guys, 280, 300 pounds, it's hard to stop it and get it back behind that line of scrimmage. So after the penalty against Norfolk State, it makes it a second and three, and Baker has the ball again, has the first down inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line. We're down under two minutes to go in the first half. And you have to wonder, I know Buddy Pugh doesn't want to have a negative play with this rain, but I don't know if he's going to at some point try to put the ball in there. It'd be hard because he's throwing in the rain and also into the wind. But they're doing a pretty good job running the ball. Exactly. They started at their own 32-yard line. They're keeping it on the ground and down to the 26-yard line is Baker again. This will be the sixth play or seventh play of the drive. That was the sixth play of the drive before Phillip Brown made the stop. Here's Baker. He's been a workhorse. He has a couple of touchdowns tonight. He has 84 yards on 13 carries, so he's uh, carried the load for the Bulldogs. And he has it again. Cuts it back to the right, but will not get away this time. The South Carolina State, they're not doing anything fancy. This is the basic eye formation running plays that you started off when you played Pop Warner ball when you were 9 and 10 years old. That was Brandon Daniels who made the stop defensively for Norfolk State. And we talked about South Carolina State playing FAMU and Hampton. The next game for the Spartans will be Hampton University. And then they play Florida a and But, you know, you're talking about these teams playing two games in a short week, in 10 days, there's a school out in Minnesota. It's called Northwestern College. They're Division III school. You know, these schools have nothing to complain about. Northwestern <laughs> College is going to play two games in one day. Wow. That's going to happen this <laughs> Saturday. And as a scheduling quirk, they have them playing Trinity Bible College. They'll play that game at home at noon. And then they'll get on a bus ride after a brief break, and they'll ride six miles across the, the highway or across the, the, the little county there and they'll go to McAllister College and they'll play a 7 p.m. game. I think the big concern was you don't get the game plans mixed up <laughs> for the two teams. Well, my thing is do you shower in between games? Do you just, <laughs> do you just keep on going into the second well, game you and just change uniform. uniforms? You got a home uniform and a away uniform. <laughs> It'll be very interesting to see what happens. That's amazing. Flag is down once again. On to stop Miguel Davis. If you're a linebacker, you have to love this type of game. Ball start against South Carolina State. We're down to one minute remaining here in the first half of play. And I tell you where it's nowhere to hide on the football field today. I mean, South Carolina State is just Illegal getting formation in. on the offense. Not enough men lined up on the line of scrimmage. Five yards from the line of scrimmage. Repeat third down. Yeah, the Bulldogs just getting in eye formation, just running downhill lead plays. They're not trying to be cute, not trying to fool anybody. They say, hey, it's raining, weather's bad. We get into our basic two-back offense, and can you stop us? Yeah, we'll see what happens if we get a no field goal situation. Their field goal kicker, that is South Carolina State, Stephen Grantham, is 4 of 9 as long as his 28-yarder. And his first ever was against Alabama State. And that was good for 28 yards. But right now, it is third and 11. Back to pass. Letting it go. Incomplete. Behind everybody. We think he was trying to hit Darby. And uh, it goes for naught. Darby was going in and the ball was thrown behind him. So a misread there. It'll bring up fourth down. And you look at the time remaining in the half. The clock stops with the incomplete pass. And uh, a little bit outside the field goal kicking range. So to bring up a fourth down. Four of five in fourth down conversions this year for South Carolina State. That's a pretty good percentage. Very good. 
This will be a fourth and 12. They have to get down to the 20 yard line. Just inside the 20 to get the first down. Here's a incomplete. Again, Darby, the intended receiver, he got a hand on it, and it'll go over on downs as this drive is halted. That's not a bad call by South Carolina State. You know you're out of your field goal kicker's range, so you just try to throw one up. Maybe catch Norfolk slipping. If he'd have put that ball a little bit more to the inside, Darby would have had a chance to run under that and make the catch. And we've seen him behind the defense all evening long. He's been behind the defense and the back judge. He's beating everybody <laughs> deep, so eventually he's going to catch one. <laughs> so with 34 seconds remaining, the band is fired up. They don't care about the rain. And all South Carolina State can do is let Norfolk State kneel down. They'll probably just run out the clock to end the first half. South Carolina State cannot stop it. They have no timeouts remaining. Good decision here by Norfolk. I mean, you're in the 14-14 ball game with a very good South Carolina State team. Your guys are playing really hard. You don't want to make any mistakes and give up any cheap scores in this situation. Just go to halftime, dry off if you can, and get ready for the third quarter. And the rain starting to let up a little bit here at Dick Price Stadium in Norfolk, Virginia. And as they go to the locker room, it's all tied at 14. A pair of field goals and a two-point conversion for South Carolina State. And Deshaun Baker with a pair of touchdown runs for South Carolina State. And we're all tied at 14 at half. And we'll take it back to the studio. Mike Gleason, take it away. McNair and John Stallworth have in common. They're some of the NFL's biggest stars, and they emerge from the best kept secret in college football, historically black colleges and universities. ESPNU is proud to present HBCU football. Every week, experience the competition, the marching bands, and the excitement that is HBCU football. Watch Southern take on Texas Southern Thursday, November 3rd at 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPNU. That's not going to slow down these guys, meaning the band members. We're tied at 14. Second half should be a dandy. Let's go to Atlanta, Georgia Tech. Like Jonathan Allen, that was the two-point conversion that served as the equalizer. about all that team speed well Deshaun Baker the sophomore out of Charlotte North Carolina didn't need it that time walks in but they're deadlocked at 14 second half's coming up enjoy yeah, we're at halftime and getting ready to start the second half and we're all tied at 14 14 apiece the Bulldogs of South Carolina State ranked 24th this week in the 1AA poll against the Spartans of Norfolk State and let's look at some of the first half highlights Eddie Here they come, okay, you see number 19, McCoy with the long run, he can do it on the air as well as on the ground. Great speed, good decision making there. The 21, Baker, two touchdowns on the day. He's been the workhorse for South Carolina State. Big Joseph Dixon playing the bootleg perfectly. They have three sacks defensively. They've been getting after the quarterback for Norfolk. Here on Norfolk State side of the ball, they've had a three-pronged attack, but tonight it's a one-man game as Terrell Johnson breaks loose. He's been the guy who's been the work cars going into this game, and the other two guys taking the back seat. But now it's Darrell Jones, the big fullback, only two catches on the night. He gets the touchdown, and the two-point conversion is finishing up by Jonathan Allen, 6'5", tight end from Virginia Beach, Virginia. 
That's the scoring for Norfolk State. And the uh, yards, if you look at the rushing yards, uh, not uh, too much difference between these two teams. Quite a difference from past years, but what do you look at that time of possession? A seven minute advantage for Norfolk State, which is kind of interesting because uh, if you remember the second time South Carolina State had the ball, they went on a six minute drive and uh, took it down and Baker scored from uh, a yard out. Yeah, and both teams have been effective running the ball, so it's kind of surprising that the time of possession is tilted to Norfolk State so big. But there's also the third down conversion. One team six for nine, Norfolk State is four of seven. So that means both defenses have to improve on trying to get off the field and stopping the offenses on third down. Terrell Johnson, seven carries, 135 yards the first half. There's his counterpart on the other side of the field. There's uh, Deshaun Baker. He had 15 carries for 88 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Treyon Smith was the only rushing touchdown. Or they kicked a pair of field goals. That is Norfolk State. And South Carolina State, which deferred in the first half, decided they would get the ball to start the second half. And it's all tied at 14. The scoring started out with a field goal by Gomez. Then Baker with a one-yard run, 7-3. South Carolina State, Gomez, another field goal, made it 7-6. Baker's one-yard run made it 14-6. And then Smith with 4-10 left in the first half with a one-yard run. And we're all tied at 14 after the two-point conversion. Darby from about the six or seven yard line. There he goes to the outside and still on his feet going down the sideline and finally steps out of bounds at about the 42, 43 yard line. Yeah, you don't want to kick the ball to Darby because he's the guy that's ranked so high in, in the uh, NCAA return. I think he's number one in the country right here. They've been doing the sky kicks early. You can see he just knows how to run through tackles. He makes people miss. He's a slippery guy with speed. So if you don't tackle him early on, if he gets into the open, he can take it the distance. But Darby, as you said, leads the nation 44 yards per return. That one was good for 34. He had a touchdown of 93 yards in the game against Winston-Salem for them this year. So it is first down and 10 for South Carolina State as we start the third quarter here in Norfolk, Virginia. The rain has subsided and teams are ready to go. Here's again going to uh, the fullback Baker or the running back Baker who had a good productive first half. He's had A thousand yards rushing last year. He was in a thousand yard rushing. And there as you look at Monte Anthony. One of the other parts of that three-headed monster. And there's Baker over on the sideline. Baker came into today's game with 196 yards rushing. He hadn't run the ball that much. He'd been a little banged up. Here we go. His counterpart Woods. And Woods is taken down with a nice open field tackle by Olumba, Anthony Olumba, and his third down. And that's a great job of corner support. What a lot of teams do, they'll have that wide receiver come in there and block the big linebacker and figure they can get their running back one-on-one -on -one with your cornerback and force him to make a tackle. And that's a good job of him coming up and getting the guy down and not giving him any additional yards. Most cornerbacks don't like to tackle like that. Well, Anthony a little shaken up on the sideline. They're tending to him on the Norfolk State uh, bench by the, with the trainers. Meanwhile, we have a third down facing South Carolina State, third and six. And they keep it on the ground again, and getting the first down is Deshaun Baker. He's just a, a workhorse, isn't he? And South Carolina State has always had good running backs. I mean, it just goes back over their history. Yeah, throughout the years, I mean, they have a guy who can always step up, give him 1,000 yards, a couple touchdowns on the year. And, and he's just continuing in that trend. As you can see, two touchdowns in the first half, and he's pounding Norfolk State again in the third quarter. First down and 10, the ball across midfield into Norfolk State territory at the 46-yard line. Working out of the shotgun this time is Cleve McCoy. Back to throw it. Has it complete to Darby. Finally gets one. And this one on a short little out pattern. Olumba is there to stop him defensively but not before he picks up seven to the 40-yard line. Keep in mind, Charlie, this secondary for Norfolk State is still a bunch of young guys. They're still trying to get their feet under them. We talked about how they had some guys open deep. But well, the Lumber has really stepped up and made some good tackles. There's a good hit here. 
good break on the ball. They run the comeback route, not giving the, the guy any extra yards after contact. And there's Baker again. Baker gets the first down to the 35-yard line. So the punishing ground game and the good lineman up front. You got Nate Richardson, a preseason second-team all-conference selection. You've got Daryl Pringle, who started part of last year when Rod Rogers went down. The team didn't lose a beat with him in there. You have Clyde Reed, a preseason first-team all-conference selection, and Jason Dean. So you've got some quality people up front blocking, and that's why Baker is having such success running the ball as he gets it once again and picks up about eight. And yeah, Baker's a good man. He runs with good pad level also. You look at him, he just keeps his shoulders over his knees. He's not a high runner. And that's why after contact, he's always able to fall forward, punish the defense, get a couple extra yards. This is what I'm talking about, coming right at you. Look at the lean forward right here, how he finishes the run. 41 stands him up at the end. But he's coming through the hole and uh, able to get some good additional yards after contact. Before the loss to Coastal Carolina, South Carolina State had been ranked as high as 18th in the 1AA poll. And here's Baker hit immediately, but then bounces off after he got hit in the line of scrimmage. He still was able to bounce off Phillip Brown and pick up yards and close to the first down if he didn't get it. He could have been stopped for a loss in the backfield, but he was able to still slither forward, get some positive yards out of that play. And it'd be third and one. And it's less than one, probably third and inches for Deshaun Baker. He's over 100 yards today. So we have two 100-yard rushers in the game. That was his 20th carry. He's at 111 yards. And here's third and short. And Baker again, first down for South Carolina State. Just a methodical drive by the Bulldogs. Good halftime speech by Coach Buddy Pete. <laughs> Whatever it was, it's working. Huh? It's working. Keep it up. And you can see, I mean, it's still just the basic goal line play. It's Baker left and Baker right, just running off tackle. The offensive line is getting a real good push. And Norfolk State is trying to sub guys in and out to keep everyone fresh, but they're just going to have to stand up and, and stop these guys up in the middle where they're getting that penetration. Ninth player of the drive, and here is a flag. This must be against, it's offsides. It must have been encroachment or causing somebody to jump. The officials are talking it over. Pete Adrian's been coaching a long time, 31 years on the college level, 36 years overall, and He's seen a lot. We were talking about defense yesterday. He said, I haven't changed anything since the 70s. He said, it, just looks, it depends on the personnel you have in there. But my defense is the same as Woods gets the carry this time. I mean, he runs a basic 3-4 defense. He said they used to call it the 50. They used to call it base, used to call it stack. So he pulls out some of his old sheets and takes the some dust of off them. And the coach said, wow, even, what's that? They're not even uh, <laughs> computer sheets. They're mimeographed, as he said. <laughs> <laughs> what is a mimeograph machine? You say that to a young person today, they won't know what you're talking about. And that's the thing. I mean, football is all about blocking and tackling. I mean, the X's and O's, some coaches try to get into all these exotic play calls. But if you just block and tackle, that's what football is all about. And uh, he knows that the scheme isn't going to be anybody. You have to have some players to beat other teams. Second and one for South Carolina State. Again, Woods trying to get to the outside, gets the first down, stood up in the hole by Dante Anderson and then got help from some other Spartans, but not before getting the first down inside the 10 where it'll be first down and goal. And Coach Adrian knew that he had a strong running game, but he was somewhat concerned in his ability of his defense to stop guys on long drives like this. And you can see that they're just making contact. I mean, Norfolk State is playing hard, but they're just still giving up the first downs. South Carolina State just being real methodical, just running on first and second and completing the third and shorts. 11th play of the drive for South Carolina State. Five minutes off the clock. Woods again to the right side, to the five. That was the 13th carry for Woods tonight. 
Yes, yeah, so you can see South Carolina State game plan is to run the ball today also, especially with the wet weather, getting into the red zone. Unless they come out with, with a bootleg or a rollout, I'm pretty sure they're just going to keep going downhill and pounding Norfolk State. And you can see Norfolk State is just having mass substitutions, getting guys coming on and off, trying to keep fresh bodies on the field to combat this running game. 39 running plays tonight for South Carolina State. And a fresh set of legs in there, and that's McFadden who's carrying the ball now. Troy McFadden, the freshman, or sophomore, I should say, from Lynchboro, South Carolina, Central High. They say maybe the fastest, if not one of the fastest men on this Bulldog team. Lining up in the T formation once again, just three backs across. Every time they just run the power off tackle, we'll see if they try that same play again. McFadden, Woods, and Capers. On the backs in the backfield behind McCoy. McFadden. He's close and he's there. Touchdown, South Carolina State. Troy McFadden, his second rushing touchdown this year. That's a sign of a real good disciplined team to execute. Coming out in the third quarter, you're in a tight ball game on the road, 14-14. You just go down the field, execute your plays. Getting the T formation, run the power off tackle. They haven't stopped it all night. They just keep running it until they do. They used 13 plays on that drive, and they used up six minutes and 40 seconds of the clock. They've had two long drives like that. Here's Grantham for the point after. And it's a 21-14 South Carolina State lead. McFadden comes into the lineup, carries the ball the last two times. The last one good for a yard and good for six. And we'll be back. Back here on College Football Primetime, Charlie Neal along with Eddie Robinson. We're the Bulldogs of South Carolina State, ranked 24th this week in the 1AA poll. Have taken a seven-point advantage over their counterparts from the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference on a 13-play, 58-yard drive that consumes six minutes and 48 seconds off the clock to start the second half. We're down to the eight minutes, and Norfolk State hasn't touched the ball here in, uh, around eight minutes and haven't touched the ball in the second half. Monte, Monte Anthony on the return and he gets some running room and gets it across the 30 to the 33 yard line. So Anthony on the return, we'll be back with more from Norfolk under eight minutes to go here in just a moment. Here on first down and 10 for the Spartans of Norfolk State. They keep the ball on the ground, Terrell Johnson gets the call. Now rotating in the, the running backs, of course, Terrell Johnson's been the big play guy today. Now they're coming in with Trayon Smith and I'll say Monte, Monte Anthony. So they continue running back by committee. Second down after a gain of a couple. Brandon Brooks rolls to the right, throws out in the flat, has a complete on the far sideline to Derek Baker. So Baker with the reception. And that completed a lot of passes for either team today. That was only the sixth pass by Norfolk State. The running games like this, I wouldn't pass much either. <laughs> here, here they're running the comeback, and Derek Baker, remember, he's the, the big play receiver. You can see Brooks taking a shot. He's a tough kid. He'll be okay. I'm not worried about him, but... I mean, the best thing he can do is just keep handing the ball off to these running backs and just complete some play actions here and there. So a first down is gained on the pass play to Derek Baker, and it's first down and 10 for Norfolk State at their own 47. Terrell Johnson, and Terrell Johnson struggles forward for a couple of yards. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage and managed to pick up additional yards. Kenlock was the man who finally wrapped him up. Travis out of Newberry, South Carolina. You know, we talk about some key players South Carolina State lost. One of them was Dreek Pooler on the defensive side of the ball from a year ago. They also lost Joel Taylor, Ryan Hamby on the defensive uh, backfield, Rogers, Cody Martin, the running back, and the receiver, Tavares Morgan. 
Here's Norfolk State with the ball, Terrell Johnson. And he's down at about the 45-yard line before stopped by Terrence Bennett. He'll be about a half a yard shy of a first down. And Terrell Johnson, he's the guy of the three backs that combines speed and power, one of the team leaders. You can see when he gets into the hole, he hits it fast, but he also has the power to move that pile and drive forward and get an extra yard or two. So he's been very effective today so far for Norfolk State. Pete Adrian said he couldn't afford to have three and outs because their defense, even though they're, they played well, they're not that good to continually stop people and get in the long defensive drives. And here's Monte Anthony. Anthony breaks a tackle. Anthony at the 20, the 15, 10, 5, and down at the two-yard line goes Monte Anthony. And that's the speed back, and you see why he's the speed back. When he gets through the hole, he can get his knees up and down and move the chains real fast, almost getting into the end zone. Oliver finds Finally made the touchdown saving stop, but another big run. This one for 42 yards. Yeah, big runs all day long. Just an inside handoff. You see the big lineman pulling around there, big Donovan Jackson, creating the seam. Safety's down on the ground. Now it's just a foot race, and he almost gets it in the end zone. 42 yards for Monte Anthony. His longest this year was 46. And he almost took that one to the house. Here's Terrell Johnson. Johnson down and touchdown. Norfolk State, Terrell Johnson. Didn't take long for them to respond. No, it didn't. <laughs> Johnson with a two-yard run. They did that in quick style, six plays. That's all they needed. All they, they don't need, need an 18-play drive. They just want to get in the end zone. I mean, with that <laughs> ground game, when you're picking up 40 and 45 yards on one run, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, they're averaging 258 yards a game rushing, and you can see why tonight. Gomez for the point after to tie it up at 21. It's up. It's through. It's good. And we're all tied at 21 here in Norfolk with 5-19 remaining. Monte Anthony, he was the man of that run. He had a big one. This one good for 42. He takes them near the goal line, and Johnson took it in. Back here, you look at Monte Anthony, who set up the last touchdown with a 42-yard run. And there's Terrell Johnson, who took it in from a couple of yards out, and he put his team up or at least tied the game at 21 apiece. They were down 14-21. So Terrell Johnson with 148 yards and a touchdown tonight on 11 carries. He's been a big workhorse, and so has his partners, Darrell Jones, Trayon Smith has a touch. Now to his credit, Norfolk State tonight has rushed the ball pretty effectively. 201 yards. I think they're going to hit their average of 258 easily, maybe yeah. in the third quarter if they get the ball back soon. <laughs> 221, though, for South Carolina State. So we're talking about balance. That's why we have a tie score, 21. Here's Gomez to kick it off, keeping it away from Darby. And it's picked up by one of the up men. And I'll tell you, he surprised everybody and taking it down the sideline and finally getting sandwiched out of bounds in front of his own bench for South Carolina State was Evans Capers, the fullback. Capers picked it up because it was a short kick, and then we got a face mask penalty on top of it. So South Carolina State's going to start great field position. Yeah, that's one of those situations where they're trying to sky kick. They don't want to let Darby touch the ball. I mean, he's leading the, the nation in return average, and he just one-hands it, just takes off running, and nobody is really there on the sideline. And he takes a vicious hit by Daniel Hammond here at the end, number 21. Bam! Right up under the chin. <laughs> I didn't see the face mask. Yeah, the face mask was there quick, but he probably didn't see the face mask either after he got hit in the mouth like that. <laughs> Anyway, great field position for South Carolina State. They only have to go 20 yards. That's that's giving that's giving up valuable real estate, isn't it? Valuable, and that's real tough on your defense. I mean, South Carolina State has a, has a potent offense and just a dominating running attack also. And to put any offense on the 20-yard line is hard on the defense. First down and 10. Baker, play, play action. Oh, he has the ball. Quarterback fooled me that time, McCoy. I thought he'd put it in and took it out. Yeah, the way these running games are going today, I think the play action is out the window. The <laughs> passing game is out the window. It's just handed off to the big guys, and, and 
and let him run it on both sides of the ball. Now, we, we kind of talked with uh, Coach Adrian, and he talked about this stretch play that, that uh, South Carolina State is running today. He said he may have to pinch his tackles or slant his linebackers and do a couple of things to stop it, try to bounce the, uh, the runs to the outside. One of the Norfolk State defensive linemen is down right at about the 16-yard uh, line. That was a five-yard gain on the run. But again, this uh, it looks like Robert Horton. It could be number 79. We'll see. If it is, he's a big fellow. Need two hands to help him up, Charlie. Yeah, that's big number 79, Robert Horton. They list him at 350. Coach says, that's not even close. He's you, like 398. And you can see he's a cinnamon swirl in the sweet tooth away from 400 pounds. I mean, he, he's a big boy. <laughs> How tall is he? He's, he has some height on him. He's 6'5", but he's he's three, what, 389 or something? And in the offseason, he's actually a furniture mover. That's what he does. <laughs> in the offseason. Yeah. yeah. And it was so ironic. He was on the offensive side of the ball, and they moved him on the defense. They say he can clog up some stuff in the middle there. They say B-gap to B-gap, he can shut it down. <laughs> right. It is second and five. Baker again cuts it back, first down, then close to the goal line. Actually down at the six, but he has a first down. First and goal at the six. Deshaun Baker on the run as Dewan. The wave on Clanton was the man on the stop. The wave on number seven, the inside linebacker, returning starter, who was actually a converted running back. Clanton. Talented players, you have to get them on the field. Baker again, and he's in with no problem. Ran through the arm tackle. Deshaun Baker from six yards out. And for Deshaun Baker, that is his third touchdown rushing this evening. And they regain the lead, 28-21. We'll though, make it 27-21 before the point after. Even with the running games, it's still guys are putting points on the board extremely quick. Naturally, they were aided by the big kickoff return. But the running games are highly effective, and they're moving down the field still pretty fast. This is a, a 20-yard drive. <laughs> Didn't take long. Didn't take Three long. plays, 55 seconds. <laughs> they were missing the snapper. <laughs> That's hard, hard to kick the field goal when you don't have the snapper. The extra point by Grantham. And it is good. And we have a 28-21 ball game. The touchdown, Deshaun Baker, 136 yards, 24 carries. Three times he's reached the end zone this evening. This one, number three. ESPNU College Football Primetime, brought to you by State Farm. Call your neighborhood State Farm agent and find out why State Farm insures more cars than anyone else. Some of the crowd still on hand here. No reason to leave. Their team only down by seven, but the rain chased a lot of people away here earlier, just before halftime. Yeah, that rain was coming pretty hard. That 50% chance of rain, I tell you, <laughs> turned into 100%. <laughs> but it Mon cleared up nicely going into this third quarter. It certainly has. Monte Anthony, one of the deep men, to return the short kick. But it won't come to Anthony. It is down right at the 25-yard line by the fullback, Smith. So it'll be first down and 10 Norfolk State. As we look at the last scoring drive, it was a three play 20 yard affair. Used only 55 seconds off the clock and it was Deshaun Baker going in with his third touchdown of the evening. He has scored twice from one yard out. That one was good for six yards. First down and 10 now for the Spartans. They trail it by seven. Let's see if they can generate some offense and some points on this drive from their own 25. First down and 10. High formation. They give it to Jones. Daryl Jones turns the corner and we get a late flag and this is going to be whistled against number 98. That's Travis Kenlock who rode him out of bounds and still hit after the player was going out of bounds and so we get a personal foul against South Carolina State. Personal foul, late hit, out of bounds, 53 of the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Well, they 
Whistled it against Henderson, number 53, but 98 was there also. Yeah, this is an easy call by the referee. I mean, running back is easing up. Guys just a little anxious. And the guy has rushed for you over 200 yards and still in the third quarter. You have a tendency to want to hit him out of bounds a couple times. Try to slow that running attack down. So the ball has moved out to the 44-yard line. But it will be first down and 10 for the Spartans. Trailing by seven. We're in the third quarter here. Keeping it on the ground and out to the 46-yard line. Monte Anthony, Wesley Middleton on the stop defensively. And you really have to like the patience of the, the ground game by Norfolk State. We asked those guys yesterday, what happens if your first 10 runs, you only get 8 or 10 yards and nothing good happens? They said, we're going to keep running. And sometimes South Carolina State steps up and they stop them for 2 or 3-yard games, but then all of a sudden they bust out for a 40 or 50-yard run and, and improve that average once again. And you see the yards tonight, passing versus running. And it's been a running game. Here's... Terrell Johnson. That's Johnson. what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> and he continues to pick him up as Kevin Corley had to finally make the stop, but not before he picks up valuable yards all the way down to the 35 of the Bulldogs. Yeah, and Terrell Johnson, once again, he just picks his holes, stiff arms the safety, turns up field. And once again, it's a matter of they stop him once or twice for a two-yard gain, a one-yard gain, and all of a sudden it's a bam, it's a gasher, and they're out for 30 or 40 yards. 18 yards on that run by Terrell Johnson. He has 166 on the night. 30 yards more than his counterpart, Deshaun Baker. Anthony this time is in the lineup, and he gets the call for two. Monte Anthony on the carry. Latavis Henderson on the stop defensively. Defensive. Latavis Henderson, sophomore out of Greenville, South Carolina, wearing number 53. And at some point, South Carolina State is just really going to have to commit and just sell out on stopping and running, put more and more guys towards the line of scrimmage. They'll have some eight, nine-man fronts. They're doing an eight-man front, but now they're going to have to bring a ninth guy in the box because this running game is just that devastating tonight. And one of the things, and we'll talk about it after this play, that the players are very elated about was their offensive line coach, and that's why they've had such success running the ball. Although this is a busted play, they're going to lose yardage back with Derek Baker on the little end around, but Tony White was there and read it perfectly and didn't let him get outside. Yeah, Tony White's the, the, the lead guy for South Carolina State, but yeah, like you were saying, Charlie, it's the offensive line coach. But we asked the coach Adrian about him, asked the runners about him. They just get real excited. It's the, basically the same offensive line from last year, but they're playing with a lot more confidence, and a lot of it is because of uh, Coach Rod Holder, who came over from Rutgers University to coach the offensive line this year. He played on well, or was a part of three national championships as a player and a coach, so... He knows how to get it done. They really respect what he has done here. Fumble. Uh -oh. We haven't seen a turnover in the ball game tonight. Could this be the first one? Yes, it is. First turnover in the ball game, and North Norfolk State commits it on a fumble. Looked like Brandon Brooks was just trying to get out from under the center, just a little too quick on that fumble and like you said we haven't had a turnover tonight pretty much an error free game even in the rain yeah he's just trying to get out get into his pass set and, and drop back into coverage too fast South Carolina State opportunistic falls on the ball so they drove from their own 25 to the South Carolina 38 and commit the turnover so the Bulldogs of South Carolina State with the ball first and 10 at their own 38. Back to pass. The quarterback, McCoy, has some running room on the left side. Takes off and decides he's going to run it. And finally he is stopped immediately before he could get ahead of steam going by Dante Anderson. And let's see how opportunistic South Carolina State has been on turnovers this year. 35 points for the season off of 12 turnovers. So they do a good job in taking the ball away and when they take it away from you, they're plus seven in giveaway takeaway margin, which ranks them number one in the MEAC in that department. Turnover is always a key stat. You always want to be on the positive side. Most teams that are positive in turnovers usually have winning seasons. Right, let's see how this plays out here. Deshaun Baker. 
And let's go to the studio in the U and Mike for an update. And Charlie, Reggie Ball, five touchdowns on the year. Four have gone to Calvin Johnson. Georgia Tech's on the board. Really struggling early on, Mike, but what a play. And he goes to his playmaker right back in it. 37 yards. Calvin Johnson, seven catches, 92. It's 10 7 NC State, Charlie. All right. They're coming back. And now we have an injury here as Georgia Tech finally gets on the board. It looks like it's Deshaun Baker a little shaken up. See the contact, he's just driving for extra yards. Like he gets that, ah, that's tough because it gets that hyperextension of that knee and that, and that groin stretches out a little bit too. Third and one. The man who scored the last touchdown, McFadden, or, or a touchdown, I should say, for uh, South Carolina State. Johnson uh, Baker scored the last one. Willie Walker made the stop for Norfolk State. So the ball is across midfield again into Norfolk State territory. And we're down to the final seconds of the third quarter. We may not get a playoff before this quarter ends. And it's a 28-21 ball game, South Carolina State. We were all tied at 14 at the half. As we start the fourth and final quarter, the final 15 minutes here in Norfolk. It's a 28-21 South Carolina State lead. But they have the ball on the other side of midfield. We'll be back to Norfolk. College football prime time. Miak style in a moment. Back here for college football prime time. Charlie Neal along with Eddie Robinson and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State with the ball at their own 29 and leading by 7, 28-21. We're in the fourth quarter. 13-11 is the time remaining. McCoy, the quarterback. Thrown the ball only 10 times tonight. And they keep it on the ground because it's been so effective. And this time is Deshaun Baker carrying people for 15 yards. Down to the 44. And we have a player that's down for the Spartans of Norfolk State holding his left leg. Is one of the defensive backs. Could not really see the number on who it is. That's just an extremely physical run by Deshaun Baker. I guess he's still healthy. He injured, left the game. But here you can see point after contact, he gets a, a full extra five yards. All 10 or 11 guys get a chance to get a piece of him and try to make the tackle, but he's still on his feet. And they desperately need him to stay healthy. You can see him coming back into the game and just continuing where he left off, being the workhorse today with three rushing touchdowns on the day so far. Dante Anderson was the player shaken up, but it was a 16-yard run by Deshaun Baker, who uh, continues to add to his total tonight. You see what he did in the first half, 67 in the second half, 157 for the game. Not a bad night for the Baker who has the ball once again but he's brought down immediately this time by Arzu Chris Arzu Saturday ESPN has a full day of college football you know the day starts in the Big Ten at noon Eastern Illinois takes on Indiana then at 3.30 it's the Duke Blue Devils taking on the ninth ranked Hurricanes of Miami college football Saturday noon and 3.30 Eastern right here on ESPNU Second down and one, or 11 rather, second and 11. Trying to come back inside on the counter, Baker and the defense. They found some renewed vigor, haven't they? Yes, they have. Two good plays, two good stops by Norfolk State. I and mean, they're running that inside and outside zone stretch play. And guess who's in there? Big number 79, Horton. There he, he is. Just, he just got up off the ground, and the ground said, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the furniture mover. You can see once he hits him, he knocks the Norfolk State guys down and everybody else. <laughs> there he is coming off the field right now. He comes in about, like you said, two pounds shy of 400. <laughs> it is third and 11 for South Carolina State. Deshaun Baker, three of, I should say, Cleveland. 
McCoy. Three of ten in passing department. Looking downfield under a little pressure. Trying to get outside. He's in trouble. And he will not get there. Dropped at the 49. Good coverage downfield by the defense. And Chris Arzu, who's been in on three of the four plays defensively on that drive for Norfolk State. And that's exactly what Norfolk State needed. I mean, uh, Coach Adrian talked about how they were having trouble stopping guys late in the game, getting off the field. That was a huge third down stop. We had an injured player on the field for Norfolk State. And that looks like Brandon Fagan. You know, we were talking to the players yesterday, and one of the things we talked to some of the veterans who had been around through the different coaching administrations, they said about Coach Pete Adrian and his staff, was a lot of times in the past when coaching staffs came in, they promised them a lot of things. Right. Uh, this staff came in, they said, look, we're going to get the weight room together, we're going to get this together, and all of those things have been fulfilled so far. So the players believe in the coaches because they have delivered on the promises they've made. In fact, Pete Adrian went out and was able to raise enough money to, to put the, paper, uh, the weight room in order and, and got them what they needed. Yeah, I think it's just a respect factor. When you have a guy that comes in here and, and talks the talk and then he backs it up and walks to walk. You just feel like I'm going to go out here on the football field and just work hard. I mean, I'll run into that brick wall for the coach because I'm going to believe and buy into what he's selling. And you can see the way they're playing with confidence. He wanted his guys to play hard. He said this season will be judged based on how hard we play for a full 60 minutes and his guys are giving it to him play after play tonight. And we saw what his counterpart on the far side of the field, Buddy Bew, was the 14th coach at South Carolina State in their history. He came down to Willie Jeffries, you know, and that was his mentor. He also coached with Bill Holtz down at the University of South Carolina before coming back as the head coach at South Carolina State. Here's the second punt by South Carolina State tonight. Kobe Bradley Bird. Why would you feel the ball that deep in your territory? Yeah. That's a that's a mental mistake. Why would you feel the ball at the two yard line? That's Emory Salmons. He should know better than that. Yeah, now you have to go 98 yards to get a score as opposed to getting that ball on the 20 yard line. That's 10:39 remaining. Norfolk State has the ball. They are backed up at their own one. Can they go 99? We'll see when we come back. When your team is having problems with special teams, you don't put yourself in a hole like you did here. I mean, these are this basic principles of football. You don't catch the ball that deep and, and get your team buried that deep in their own uh, territory. They've lost a game down here like this. Here's the quarterback going to pass it on first down and just overthrows. Had a man out there, but just couldn't get the ball to him. A real gutsy call by the that coach was right there. Bailey, the tight end. He was trying to hit number 85, still looking for his first reception of the year. And he's the backup tight end, of course, number 18. Jonathan Allen has a couple catches today in a two-point conversion. That was a good play for that because he gets, you know, nobody pays attention to the tight end. At all, not in that situation. <laughs> if he catches it, he may still be running. <laughs> At least he gets him out of the hole. Second down. Fullback on the carry, and he picks up three yards out to the five-yard line. Wide open. Brooks just couldn't hit to Mr. Bailey. I mean, you run a first down play action from your two-yard line, <laughs> you're going to surprise everybody. And you can see Bailey had snuck behind the linebackers and the free safety. Yeah. Wesley Middleton, the free safety hit, was looking in the backfield. So to bring up a third down and seven, Ball out to the five-yard line. Third down conversions tonight for Norfolk State. They're 50%, five of 10. Back to pass again. The quarterback throws. Overthrown! Oh, too big. Anthony was there, and he threw it just too high for anybody. Even the defensive back, Oliver, number 20 there, he couldn't even get to it. William Oliver, so to bring up a fourth down. I guess if you're going to quarterback, if you're going to miss, miss bad. <laughs> and he missed bad enough that the defensive back couldn't make a play on this ball. You can see he's 
William Oliver gets pretty high to try to pick that off. But he had his guy open. He had to come back right. Of course, that's the speedster. Derek Baker, that's the guy who you want to have run those type of routes because everybody's going to respect his speed and play off. Well, let's see what happens here with Gomez standing at the back of his end zone. And again, remember the ever dangerous Rod Darby is standing inside midfield to return this punt. Now they've sent two men back on the punt return team for South Carolina State because they know what Norfolk State is doing in terms of getting the ball away. He didn't run. He just was going to kick it straight away. It's going to come down at the 40-yard line. South Carolina State feels it. And let's see exactly on the one, number one, Henry on the return. Don't forget ESPN game plan features 15 plus college football games each week and if you can't find the big games you want this Saturday there's a good chance that you can find it on ESPN game plan don't miss the games you really want to see the marquee games this week of Minnesota against 21st ranked Michigan Oklahoma against number two Texas and Virginia against Boston College who's ranked 18th ESPN game plan available on TV and online the call your order and pay-per-view provider or go to ESPN.com Baker on the carry. Great field position again for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. The Wayvon Clanton stopping on, on the stop defensively. Remember Coach Adrian talked about he didn't want his defense in situation where he had to keep coming into the game and have to force three and outs. He really wanted his offense to at least get a first down or two and now they're right back on the field after having a good stop of South Carolina State earlier. Second down and nine. Now timeouts being called. South Carolina State, I think, is going to call this one. Let's go over to the studio and check in with the U and Mike Gleason. Well, Charlie in Atlanta. Oh, Georgia Tech is coming back. And that one after being down, was it 10 to nothing? Yeah, it looks like it's a very good game down there in Atlanta. What are you, you a baseball fan? Of course. What do you think of the White Sox? White Sox are looking good. 59 was the last time they won a home game in a, in a playoff. Hey, they won two back to back. Sooner you weren't later. even born then. When yeah, it was, it's sooner or later. I mean, <laughs> last year was the Boston Red Sox, and now it's the Chicago White Sox. And right now we have the Norfolk State Bull, uh, Spartans on defense trying to stop the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Here's a little pass to Darby. One on one on the far side. That's what they wanted. They got it, and it's a touchdown. Wow. <laughs> Darby, one on one. He just juked everybody. And he's in the end zone. Pete Adrian hadn't blitzed much tonight. He took a chance and gambled right there. Darby running the comeback route. One-on-one, -on -one. I mean, he's a punt returner. He leads the 1AA in, in kickoff return yards, so you know he's hard to tackle on the sideline. Quarterback, 25 yards. Quarterback gets it to him in good position. He just ducks under, under the defender, and he's off. Six touchdown pass of the year for McCoy. First touchdown reception for Darby and here for the point after Grantham to try to make it a 35 to 21 ball game and that's the way it is. We're in the fourth quarter. 8.50 the time remaining. And let's look at it once again. Here's McCoy's first touchdown pass of the night and look at the move that Darby puts on the defender and he gets it into the end zone. As we get ready to kick it off here, South Carolina State taking an advantage of 14 points, 35 to 21. You look at Emory Sammons, he's the man that kind of buried his team a little bit earlier on that punt return and catches that ball at the two yard line and is tackled immediately. Let's hope you don't uh, make the same mistake again. Grantham with the kickoff, short kick. Comes down at about the 21-yard line. What happened? His knee touch? A one person. Oh, he fair called a catch. Somebody called for a fair catch. Right. I was going to say. All right. So the ball will be at the 25-yard line. As you look at Emory Sammons come off, he was back there. Yeah, he, he took the, the catch there on the two-yard line. Of course, the old rule is don't back up inside the 10. 
that buried him, and then you have Darby, and you can't tackle this guy in the hallway or a phone booth, so you <laughs> darn sure won't tackle him in open field. And um, a poor man, Daniel Hammond, never really had a chance at cornerback. But it was all set up by that bad decision fielding that punt return. And special teams have cost Norfolk State in the earlier games with victories. First and 10 now at their own 25 for the Spartans of Norfolk State, down by two touchdowns. Brandon Brooks gets out of the kitchen, a little heat back there, and it gets a first down out to the 35-yard line. And you talk about Brandon Brooks. There's a young man on the sideline wearing number 10. Is He was scheduled to be the backup quarterback. There he is, Antoine Austin. He's a fifth-year senior. He tore some uh, left knee ligaments. He tore just about everything, the MCL, ACL, the LCL, and the PCL. And, you know, he wants to come back. He thinks he can have a six-year eligibility. But the doctors are very skeptical of him coming back because it could be some permanent injury. Yeah, when you tear multiple ligaments, I mean, he's had one surgery. He's scheduled to have another one. It's just extremely difficult to recover and play at any type of level um, with those type of injuries. It certainly is, and it's a first down, and they keep it on the ground and move straight ahead. You know, when you talk about Bill Davis over on the South Carolina State side, and we, we see there's Antoine Austin again. You know, he started his college coaching career at South Carolina State as alma mater on the offensive side of the ball. Then he became the defensive coordinator in the years that they were winning those national championships, 80, 81, 82, and 83. They won four back-to-back -back under Coach Willie Jeffries. But now he's the offensive coordinator again. <laughs> he's got it all, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess football is football, and it's good to coach both sides of the ball because you realize, you know, what, what was hard for me to stop, that's the players I'll run. Here's a pass out the flat for a first down, and getting out of bounds is James Callahan. That is a converted quarterback on the reception there, and that's Callahan's first reception of the night. And for Brandon Brooks, that is his 10th pass, completed four. That one good for 14 and a first down, right at the midfield strike. Yeah, Norfolk State is going to have to come out of their comfort zone of just pounding the ball and running. They're going to have to open it up, take some chances, let Brandon Brooks throw the ball down the field because they're down 14 points here in about the middle of the fourth quarter. Jones, the lone setback there, and he has the ball, the fullback going straight ahead, maybe a yard, that's it. Right here, we're at College Football Primetime. We're on the campus of Norfolk State University for this MEAC matchup between Norfolk State and South Carolina State. I'm Charlie Neal along with my partner, Eddie Robinson, and glad you could be with us for College Football Primetime. We've enjoyed it. It's been a pretty good ball game. Very good ball game. I mean, North Carolina, I mean, yeah, Norfolk State has come out here and run the ball effectively. Well, South Carolina State has put some points on the board also. Still a very competitive game. Second down. The pass is complete and hit immediately after the reception is Errol Henry. And Errol Henry really leveled there. I'll tell you, the defensive back, I think, got it worse than the receiver. I think he knocked himself out. That's number <laughs> Kevin five, Corley. Kevin Corley. <laughs> yeah. And he's the defensive leader. I mean, they have a young secondary, and that was somewhat of a concern. But he's just sitting this at, at 15 yards, flat foot, and just come up and just run through the defender. He was the only returning starter in the secondary for South Carolina State. On third down, a little fade. Knocked away by Corley. Or make that 16 on the defensive side of the ball. That's Broom. Broom, that's one of the young defenders. I mean, 5'9", yeah. 160, only a sophomore running step by step. With Callahan, yeah. Up the play for the ball Let's ball watch it once again. Didn't panic when the ball was in the air. He got his head around, used the long arm, used the right arm, was able to stretch out and just knock that ball away. But I believe Callahan telegraphed it because he put his arms up before Way the ball early. got there. That allowed the defender to go, go up and make the, the stop defensively. Fourth down punting situation. Now they're going to fake it. The and option. The little option. Do they get there? No. Oh. They're not going to get to the first down marker. They tried the little option with Antonio Gomez running it, and Kevin Corley was over there to make the stop. They tried to make it happen. They sent it to the up man, the blocking back, and they tried the little option to the running back or to the punter, and Gomez just couldn't get to the first down marker. And Pete Adrian told us he had a couple of tricks yeah. <laughs> coming out of the uh, punting game. Timeout on the field with 6.13 to go. South Carolina State takes over on downs. They lead it by 14. 
Here's the Norfolk State sideline trailing by a couple of touchdowns. You know, they added nine players since they came to camp in August. And one of the things that, as a new coaching staff, you always have to come in and establish your own identity and establish some kind of discipline. And they have mandatory breakfast. If you're late for class, you get suspended. I mean, th those are some of the things that Coach uh, Adrian feels is very important as far as uh, developing young men. And he said, this is not all, all about wins and losses this particular year. It's about improving every game you go out. And, and they definitely are improving. You can tell here his guys are still playing hard late into the fourth quarter, even though they're down by 14. I mean, the score isn't indicative of how close this game was. Just the, the late miscue on the special teams allowed Sacramento State to take the 14-point advantage. And on the other side, Buddy Pugh says, you know, here's a team that is, doesn't have a lot of experience, but faster and, and more athletic than some of the teams he's had in the past. And you can see the athleticism in these young men tonight. Here's Deshaun Baker adding to his total. He's over 160 yards for the evening. And talking to Buddy Pugh, I mean, his goal, he said since he came to South Carolina State, was to get into the 1AA playoffs. This is his fourth year there. They didn't make it yet. I mean, that, that big loss last week to Coastal Carolina was huge. And, and that's a team that they beat James Madison. So they're a legitimate uh, you know, top 25 team in 1AA, but that may cost them going down the stretch depending on the outcome of their Hampton game. That's right, because this team, this South Carolina State team, has won 11 MEAC titles more than any other team in the conference. The only team close to them is Florida a and They've won seven as Deshaun Baker gets the call once again. You know, last year they were the co-leaders of the conference with uh, Hampton University with identical uh, six and one marks, but it was their first championship since 1994. That was the last, and the last time that South Carolina State was in the 1AA playoffs was in 1982. So it's been a while since they've been there. Yeah, more than 20 years. I mean, that's why Buddy Pugh says, I mean, his goal is to get this team into the 1AA playoffs and try to compete for the national championship, which I think is great uh, that, that schools have that as, as their focus and not just focusing on, you know, winning your, your big crosstown rivals. You want to get to the playoffs and compete at that big level against the James Madison and you know, those type of schools in 1AA. Kobe Bradley Berg is back to kick it away. Now South Carolina State calls a timeout. I guess maybe they're going to figure out are we going to actually punt it or are we going to try a trick play? Four minutes and three seconds is the time remaining on the clock. Don't forget, tomorrow night, two of the premier high school football programs in the state of Pennsylvania will meet for bragging rights in the state when it's Bishop McDevitt and the Crusaders take on the Bulldogs of Berwick. It's right here on ESPNU in the Old Spice Red Zone Showcase presented by Nike on ESPNU tomorrow night. It's underway at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. For more information, just log on to ESPN.com. Like a good Friday night high school football. No question. Game. No question about it. Can we start and recap the scoring. It started off with Norfolk State getting on the board on Gomez's 34 yard field goal. South Carolina State came back. Baker with a one yard run. Gomez then hit a 36 yard field goal to make it 7 6. That was 14 6 on Baker's second touchdown of the evening. And just with about four minutes and ten seconds left in the first half, Norfolk State tied it on Smith's one-yard run. They went for the two-point conversion. Allen caught the pass in the corner of the end zone. It's all tied at 14 apiece. Then in the second half, South Carolina State went up 21-14 on a one-yard run by McFadden. Johnson's two-yard run, Gerald Johnson made it and tied it up 21 apiece, 5.19 to go in the third quarter, but South Carolina State came right back down the field. Baker, a six-yard run, 28-21, and then McCoy's 25-yard pass to Dar uh, Darby, Rod Darby, made it 35-21, and that's where we stand right now, and we get a false start against South Carolina State. See, they were going to try a little trickery. They want to get, try to pick up that first down, as I said. Now they get the five-yard penalty. Do you change your philosophy and bring the punter on now? Well, yeah, if the five, yeah, but the five-yard penalty, you definitely have to punt in this situation. I mean, they just went back to their basic T formation play with the, the power play off tackle. Yeah, they were going to go for it. Like you said, why would you call a timeout unless you're Please thinking about Please place four minutes, three seconds on the game clock. So they lost two seconds. They just 
Want to reset it to 403. Yeah, but if you convert that fourth down conversion right there, I mean, you're at the four-minute mark with a 14-point lead, and I like the call by Coach Q. You're pretty much putting the nail in the coffin and just ending the day for the Norfolk State Spartans. But now they still have another chance because you had the penalty. Now your punt team is on it, and they can make something happen quick. Norfolk State could possibly get back into this ball game. 4.03, the time remaining right now. Randy Berg is back to punt it away. It's Baker, the deep man, to return it. He's standing at the 10. And they're gonna, it look like they're gonna try a little. <laughs> uh, he's gonna let this one go, but it's gonna die. Look at this. It carried into the end zone. They could not down it. It died. The wet grass probably didn't help the yeah, situation. <laughs> so it'll be brought out to the 20. 50-yard punt. 55 after the penalty. Well, what is the turning point in this game, in your opinion? Well, I mean, definitely it has to be the special team miscue right here. And Emory Sammons takes that punt on a two-yard line. They had to then, after a three and out, they had to punt. Great field position by South Carolina State. They punch it in for the 14-point lead. First down and 10. Ball batted in the air. Incomplete pass. Getting his hands on it. Big number 91 defensively for South Carolina State. And he knocks it, knocks it up. And it goes incomplete. Matthew Brigman. Wow, just great swim move. Great explosion off the ball. Here's a guy that the coaches say has a great ability. He has the ability of a really good player. Just has to keep developing and work extremely hard. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Clock stop. Brooks under pressure. He'll be sacked fourth time tonight. He has been sacked. So the coming into the game, they'd only been sacked nine times. He's been sacked four tonight. I mean, this is, isn't the situation they want to be in. I mean, they're not set up or designed for a 14-point comeback with three minutes and 30 seconds left. They want to pass when on their own turn. They want a play-action pass. They don't have to sit back and, and drop back and pass. I mean, you have guys who are big, strong, physical run blockers. It's hard to then convert them into agile pass blockers also. Third and 17 for the Spartans. Could be their last chance effort. 3-11 to go. Third down conversions tonight. 5 of 12. Long pass. There's Baker out there. And he has it. Baker. Oh, and he fumbles. And South Carolina State has it. And now they're running back with it. Coming back is Oliver. And that's the play they were waiting for. Baker got out there. The ball was knocked away by Broom. Oliver recovers and brings it back for the Bulldogs. What a chain of events. And when Brandon Brooks initially threw that ball, I was like, who's going to catch it? It seemed like it was way over everyone's head. But you can see the speed of Derrick Baker. Now, he was an All-American on the 4 by 400 Florida State track team before he transferred. It's a great play of catching the ball, but then South Carolina State turns around with the strip. Coming back with a turn by William Oliver. Tough break for Norfolk State. Certainly was a tough break. And those are the types of things that hurt you. So he knocked it away. Number 16, Broom knocks it away. And then Oliver, there's nobody there with white shirts to pick it up. Yeah, that's one of the young guys in the secondary, but great job of not just making a tackle, but popping that ball out also. From their own 44, Woods trying to turn the corner. They string it out, and they got him down before he could turn the corner. He loses maybe a yard on the play. Back to the 43-yard line. But, Charlie, you really have to tip your hat to the Norfolk State team. I mean, they came out here and played extremely hard. They gave the Bulldogs all they could handle. I mean, they still have a chance to make something happen, but they never quit. I mean, down by 14, if Derrick Baker can make that catch, which he did, and hold on to the ball, I mean, they're in scoring position. This game is still real tight if he can get that ball into the end zone with his speed. Coming into today's game last year, after four games, South Carolina State had put 158 points up. This year, they'd only put up 129. So people were saying, well, what's wrong? Your scoring is down. But on the other side, Norfolk State did just the opposite. After four games a year ago, they had only scored 71 points. This year, as Woods gets the call once again, 
and Woods gets to midfield and across to about the 49. They had put up 139 points in their first four games. So we've seen two programs not really going in different directions because South Carolina State is still winning. But Norfolk State has improved tremendously. Yeah, Norfolk State, I mean, you really have to like what Coach Adrian is doing right here. These guys are heading on the right direction real fast. They've been competitive in every ball game. The special teams miscues actually have cost them each and every ball game. And even in this game, they had the punt that was down at the one or two yard line that should have went to the end zone. And that cost them seven points towards the end of the fourth quarter also. It certainly did. It is third down right now facing South Carolina State. And the Woods gets the first down. He gets to the marker, and he gets the first down right at the 45 of Norfolk State, and that should do it. Well Davis on the stop defensively. We're down to a minute and six seconds remaining in this contest. Now they have um, a situation where they've, they've played hard against South Carolina State, which is, is one of the class members of the MEAC. I mean, they took Bethune-Cookman into four overtimes and, and lost by a field goal. So, I mean, Norfolk State is competing against all of the big guys in the MEAC conference. And they'll play their next game here at Dick Price Stadium a week from this Saturday when they host Hampton University, who's right down the road. Hampton just has to come through the tunnel. And uh, it should be a pretty good one. That tunnel gets crowded, so they have to be careful. <laughs> yes, it does. You know what time of day you try to get through there. <laughs> so the Bulldogs of South Carolina State are going to increase their record to 4-1 and one for the season, 2-0 and oh in the conference, while the Spartans fall to 1-4 and 0-3 and oh and three in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And should be 35 seconds or 25 or 35, one of the two here in the uh, in the ball game. And again, uh, the South Carolina State goes home to face the Rattlers of Florida A&M. The other, there are two new coaches in the in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference other than Pete Adrian. You have the new coach down at Florida A&M and uh, Ruben Carter. Ruben Carter. Yeah. They'll be coming up to Orangeburg for the Bulldogs next game at home and then they play Hampton for Hampton's homecoming. The Bulldogs have to be careful to not overlook Florida a and I've seen them play a couple times this year. They're a talented team. I asked Coach Pugh, how do you keep this team from overlooking Norfolk State? He says, look at the Bethune-Cookman game, 63-61. Thank you, Bethune. <laughs> we can't overlook anybody. The final score from here in Norfolk, Virginia, Norfolk State 21, South Carolina State 35. Join us next Thursday when Louisiana Lafayette visits Arkansas State. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Once again, our final score, Norfolk State 21, South Carolina State 35. What do you think? I think it was a great ball game. I mean, Norfolk State played hard. I mean, it's not determined in wins and losses, and, and they played a full 60 minutes. All right. Well, for Eddie Robinson and our entire ESPNU crew, Charlie Neal saying so long from Norfolk again, 35-21 to final, South Carolina State over Norfolk State. Now let's join Mike Gleason and Tom Luggerbill in our studio. Who won the toss? Glory days, they'll pass you by in the wink of a young girl's eye. Senior night here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Welcome to Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. College football primetime on ESPNU. A Division One AA showdown. North Carolina A&T, the Aggies playing host to Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Both members of the MEAC, the Cats 2-2 two two in conference play, hoping to keep the Division One AA playoff chances alive. The Aggies at 2-3 and three, trying to stop a two-game losing streak. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with former UCLA Bruins star Charles R. Buckle. Glad you could join us on May magnificent night here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats, they play an exciting brand of football, something called the Wyatt Bone, which we'll explain in just a moment. But they are led by a spark plug, five inch, nine inches tall, named Jimmy Russell at quarterback. Mike, he is awesome to watch because he does so much with the football. He handles